Okay, wait a couple minutes for everybody to get here. And uh, hope everybody's having a good week. <coughs> get my voice going here. I got my hot coffee and my cold juice. And got a bunch of stuff to show today. Hi, Kelly W., Barbara G., Teresa, everybody else popping. Good morning, Candy. <coughs> Sorry, guys, I got to get my voice going here. I got a bunch of Hobby Lobby stuff. And Faithful Mass sent us some books, so I'm going to do a giveaway. And, uh, yeah. Pamela. Okay, lurk as usual. <laughs> Molly, Louise. <clears throat> Hi, Juanita. She spins. Um, let's see. I think I caught everybody so far. So I hope everybody's having a good week. Uh, Pink Hot, good morning. Uh, let's see. Oh, I'm sorry you don't feel well. Well, just chill and lay back and just... Have us on uh, lurk mode. <laughs> Have us on lurk mode. Hi, Tavorna. Or is that Tavorna? Tav Tavorna. Tavorna. I got to make it sound real exotic, you know. <laughs> Hi, Zeely. <Z> <clears throat> Sylvia. Try to catch everybody. So if you're just joining us for the first time or you're watching the recording, I usually come on a few minutes early to say good morning to everybody and chit chat. So if you don't like chit chat, just scrub on the little bar. <laughs> so it is a chat show. It's uh, coffee and art in the morning and that coffee and art includes chatting. Hi, Abigail. How you doing? Uh, how are you like it made? My name is Tav. Okay. Tav. Tavona. Tavona. <laughs> I just like making, I just make like the names to sound fun. Uh, hi, Bacola. How you doing? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm going to show some Hobby Lobby, Hobby Lobby haulage. And then I have some books from Our Faithful Mess. And I will be doing a giveaway today, as long as my mods are up for it. <laughs> I'll do a couple. I'll give away a couple of books of the books that um, that uh, our faithful mess sent. Let's see. I said hi to Candy. <laughs> and who else am I missing? Thanks, everybody, for stopping in. Thanks for the thumbs up, the likes, the shares, and everything else y'all do. And, uh, yeah. Hi, Jeanette. Jeanette Chabonneau. Chabonneau. Chabonneau? Chabonneau. <laughs> um, so, let's see. Here, do I got that a little bright? Do I have it too bright? Let's do a little contrast. There we go. That looks a little better. There we go. Um, hi, Kimberly. So I don't know if all Hobby Lobbies are clearancing out some sections or they're going to do another big sweep like they did. They, I think they do it like once a year, but a couple years ago is when we got all the um, acrylic inks on clearance. Uh, I don't know. I'm there, I know that they were clearing out a lot of Jane Davenport stuff, but they had a lot of other stuff on clearance as well. And she just started clearancing out on Mon uh, like Saturday night, Monday morning. And so they're still working through the store. This is all, this is the section that I saw the clearance stuff. I didn't see clearance stuff in the art supplies yet. I, I actually went to Hobby Lobby to get myself another, um, another um, mix, Canson Mixed Media XL. 
I went to get another one of these because they're 40% off this week. And uh, <clears throat> then, I, of course, I walked the whole store. So when I walked over to the, you know, craft supplies and then on the other side of the craft supplies are happy planners. And, pl and a lot of the planners were marked out. I do not need any planners, any inserts, any planner papers. So I just kind of like glanced at it. Although I did get one thing, I think. Yeah, I did, I, get one, I did get one thing for Zandra. I got this for Zandra. Um, it was marked down. It was uh, regularly $5.99. It was on sale for $1.49. So they did have a, a lot of the happy, well, I don't want to say happy plan, the planner stickers and planners and planner inserts. And a lot of the planner stuff is marked down. So if you have a Hobby Lobby and you do planners, I need nothing planner. I have like multiple planners that have multiple uh, pro, um, multiple purposes. One is like my address, um, happy mail, outgoing kind of book to keep up with the fibs. Not That's not the fibs book where I make a page for you guys. That's a whole different happy planner thing. But <laughs> so I do not need any planner stuff, but I just saw these little mermaid tails sticking out. So I picked that up for Zandra. But other than that, I don't think I got any happy planner stuff. So, or planner stuff. I shouldn't just specify happy planner because it's not, they had a whole bunch like this is Agenda 52, which is a Hobby Lobby brand, uh, Paper Studio brand. And uh, it's not happy planner, you know. Hi, Aunt Beck. How you doing? Let's see, Kelly W. Um, and I don't know your name. Um, the foreign, the foreign name. Can we, do you have a name we can call you? Do you have a name we can call you? Uh, you speak English, so, you know, maybe you have a name that we can call you. Hi, G. Um, how you doing? G's been, I, I, I haven't seen a video from her today or yesterday, but G's been making some fun videos and showing her ATCs and planners and uh, sketchbooks and all kinds of stuff. I just like, I like G's voice. I like her, her vibe. I like G's vibe. <laughs> G could show me, you know, a pile of, you know, scraps. And well, sometimes she does. She could show me a pile of scraps and I'd listen to her. I just like G Brody's vibe. She has a good vibe, a nice chill voice. And, you know, it's, she's just, I just like her. Okay, Merkwood. Okay, Merkwood. Let me write that down because I will not remember that, Merkwood. Let me write that down. And let me try to write down kind of what your name looks like. Uh, Merkwood. Okay, well, welcome, Merkwood. Thanks for being here. Okay, well, Mark, what's stop? Thanks for stopping in and saying hi. <laughs> you gotta go. Thank you. That's okay. Don't apologize. Yeah, Tavorna, ciao, Markwood. <laughs> Have a good day. So, uh, yeah. So I, I really, I really enjoy G Brody's uh, channel. <laughs> and I, I've been watching her since she was she would sit in her car and do like two minute videos on a little, whatever she was working on that day, and her little mini sketchbook. Now, I like this lady. She's really, she's really cool. She's chill. She's like, she's just kind of like low key and just really, you know, I, don't know, I just like her. Um, let's see. Blue Blood, good morning. Riri, hi Riri. Riri, when are you going to get yourself a picture of an avatar face? Riri, Riri. Give yourself an avatar face. It doesn't have to be your face. It can be something. A Pacola uses a shell. Come on, girl. Girl, give yourself a face. <laughs> oh, Kelly W. Um, Janice Johnson. Hi, Janice. How you doing? <laughs> Riri. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Give yourself a face, Riri. Uh, I can't put your picture up here. You have to put your picture up here. I'm talking about not just for me, but for the whole Fibs group. 
<laughs> Give yourself an avatar. Hi, Missy. <laughs> Hedwig, Christina, anybody else I might have missed coming in? I <laughs> love you too, Blue Blood. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so again, I'm going to show my little um, haul here. I don't really know. Let me see. Let me kind of add it up in my head. That's Let's see. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 20. I say about 25 bucks here. This is all this was about about $25, something along that line, maybe 26. Anyway, it um, but you know, like this, for instance, this um, Jane Davenport brush set was normally $19.99. I would never have paid that for. I'm just gonna be honest. But I paid $4.99. And um, I have a watercolor friend that I might send this to. Somebody just to test out. You, I, it says you can use it for pastels, what paint. It says it's for everything, but it's a mermalicious brush set. Now I know Xander already has it. I think Xander has it in a, I don't know if she has it in gold or if it comes in a teal color, but I know Xander has this. So I have another a watercolor friend. I won't say who it is, but I think I'm gonna send that to her. Where, where what, uh Riri? Where did I buy this stuff? Hobby Lobby. Or where can you fix, find your name? Under your settings. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I wasn't sure what where you're asking. I got this stuff at Hobby Lobby. And if you're asking about where to change your avatar, it's in your settings. Oh, uh, let's see. Hi, uh, uh, let's see. Blanca, Blanca G, uh, Missy Poo, Claire. Okay, go eat. Oh, go go grab breakfast real quick, Claire. Hurry up. I've got about five minutes <laughs> until I start showing. Uh, yes, and yes, yeah. In your settings, all you have to do is have a picture of yourself or your or whatever picture you want your face to be in your computer, in your phone, or wherever you have your pictures. Uh, and then you just upload it when you go to your settings, and there'll be a little thing that says me or avatar or something. It'll say you know, my picture, something. You'll see. It'll look just like you do now with no face. <laughs> and you click on it and you upload the picture from your computer, phone, iPad, wherever you're working. You just upload it to your face. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh. D said my Tuesday morning had a bunch of them. My Tuesday morning closed, D Rich. Mine was one of the ones that closed. My Tuesday morning is no longer around. So they closed uh, a couple of weeks ago. So uh yeah, I don't have a I don't have a Tuesday morning anymore. So I gotta watch for these hobby lobby sales. <laughs> I, I'm going to use some, I'm giving some of this away and I have plans for it. I am going to open these up today. These are the Art Alchemy, um, what do you call it? Uh, Prima uh, glitter. No, no, not glitter. Are they glitter or just shiny? I'm not sure if they're glitter or shiny paints. And there's three in a pack. I'm going to, we're going to open these up today. They're called Sparks. They're normally $16.99. They were on, on clearance for four twenty four, so I got two of them. They had they had another one. They had three. That another set, and I looked at those colors and I said, well, some of those colors almost look like these. Like there was another gold. There was another blue. So I didn't get that third pack. I just got these two. So I, I'm gonna probably open these up and test them today. Um, Art alchemy. This one's called fantasy. This one's called carnival. I don't remember what the other one was called. But anyway, so, yeah, I got those. Oh, you like my uh, Leonardo book, Abigail? Thank you. I like your journals that you've been making. If y'all don't follow Abigail over on Facebook, she has some beautiful journals, handmade journals. And uh, you need to go peruse the awesomeness. That is Abigail. Good morning, Janet. How you doing? Um, sparkly space world coming as that's what you think I'm going to do make sparkly worlds make sparkly worlds with these well I'm going to test them out today 
and I'm going to show all the other stuff that I got. <clears throat> and uh, then I also have, I'm going to show you real quick. Um, our Faithful Mass sent a stack of the Explorer's Journey, Explorer's Journey uh, story and uh, well, it's, a, it's a wordless story, but it's a story uh, <laughs> by David Haben, color book. And it's really cool how you can go from front to back or back to front. I love that. I'll show it in a minute, in a little bit. But she, fa our faithful mess sent us a stack of these. I'm going to do a give. I'm going to do two giveaways today. I usually do my uh, book giveaway the first Wednesday of the month. But I'm going to go ahead and let's just pretend this is the first week of September. And I'm going to give away two of these today. She also sends stamps. She always sends stamps. And I appreciate it. Hubster appreciates that. So, uh, and uh, so I'm going to uh, do two giveaways today of those books to two of you guys. Now, that being said, that being said, international, international, I will do a separate, um, a separate giveaway for international. And uh, I, I can either do, if whoever wins, can either pick the um, print that I did of the peace sloth, unless you already got it. Because if I do a giveaway and you've already supported me and I've already given you a peace sloth, you probably want a different print. So let me give you all a sneak peek of my September print I've been working on. So this is my sneak print. Oh, wait a minute. i got to fix something. Hang on. I just saw something. i got to fix it. Nobody else will notice it but me, but I noticed it. So hang on. Let me fix this right here. I smeared something. I smeared something earlier. So let me fix that smear. Oh, I smeared that. And I'm not done with it. I still have more uh, detail to put in. Actually, I would say it's probably about mm, maybe 75% done. So I still have a lot more detail to put in. But I'll show it to you so far. There we go. I'll show it to you so far. So this is going to be the September print. Thank yous. So I'm working on my um, Samurai uh, Owl. And I still have detail to do in his face. And all in here, there's going to be other fabric type patterns in here. And more uh, stuff in the wings. But you can kind of see... Uh, it's big. Of course, I'm not going to I'm not going to make a print this big. The print will be, you know, eight and a half by 11, eight by 10, whatever. So, you know, that size. So a mailable size. So this is the print that I'm working on um, for the September. Thank yous. So when I do my international, you know, when I do a giveaway today of the books and the international people, they can either pick they can either pick that or a, a print of. Um, uh, let me get one down here. <clears throat> a peace sloth print, which was, oh my God, oh, I got a cramp in my toe. I'm sitting on my foot. Hang on. Oh, got a cramp in my toe. Okay, it's it's okay now. <laughs> they can have one of these. Uh, but just in case you already got one, I don't want to have to give you one back. Uh, hello, Gary's Mixed Bag. Um, thank you, Riri. Thank you, Janet. So thanks, D. Thanks, Pink Cut. So that will be, um, that's going to be September's print. And also if I do a, you know, because I'm not sending books international. <coughs> I'm not sending uh, books international. So uh, if you're an international viewer, then you can either pick one of those two prints. Hi, Melinda. Yeah. <laughs> well, Jan Janet goes, wait, you think of these things. Well, remember I, last week when I was looking for my samurai lemur? Well, I do so many lemurs. I love my lemurs. I love me some lemurs. I've got lemur love. Hashtag lemur love. <laughs> I thought, well, I'm going to do something different. So I'm going to do an owl. So I did a samurai owl instead of the samurai lemur, which is what I was looking through that sketch, my portfolio from 2017, my 2017 portfolio that I looked through uh, last week and I couldn't find the original. It didn't matter. I mean, I didn't have to have the original to work from, but I said, let me just go ahead and do something different. So I did the uh, samurai owl, which I'm still working on. Uh, thank you. Thank you, G. And um, so 
but those kind of things come from the list, Janet. You know, when you make a list of, you know, people, places, things, occupations, transportation, you make all those lists and we've done so many of them here and you already know this. I'm, I'm preaching to the choir here, but, and you make these lists and you recombine your list and or mind map out different possibilities. And when you do that, those kind of things, you just got to write them down. See, I think everybody has those kind of ideas. They just don't write them down. They don't do anything with it. So you got to write them down. Hi, Melinda S. Um, oh, no. Okay, well, don't don't type then, Melinda. Just lurk. Just lurk. Hi, Kimberly. Uh. <laughs> Janet. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Hi, Jersey. How you doing? Uh, and on computer, no emojis. Okay. <laughs> oh, welcome. Thank you. So anyway, uh, I'm going to go through my Hobby Lobby haul, and then we're going to, uh, I'm going to show the color book, and I've already started working in my copy. She gave me a copy as well. And um, so I'll show you what I, my plan is for working in the, uh, let me get it here again the explorer's journey now y'all know i have his other book which is called the search for the light bulb burglar if y'all remember that this is the same author artist that did that one the search for the light bulb burglar and uh so anyway our faithful mess sent me is it four five seven she sent me seven copies of these so i'm gonna give two of them away today and again, international, I will send you a print of your choice. So, all right. Um, let's see. Hi, Del Lobo. Hi, Julie Topaz. Happy, wonderful Wednesday to you, too. Um, Claire, I do write my ideas down for my colors and my coloring books. So, well, anything you write down, anytime you write down any ideas, whether it's on Post-it Note, your Society of Idea Collector, comp book, traveler's notebook, three ring binders. You know, I keep three ring binders, but I don't pull out a three ring binder every time that I have an idea. Most of my ideas get written down here first. Post-it notes. And thank you, Sharon L., for all the post-it notes you sent me over the years. I, I will never run out of post-it notes, Sharon L. And thank you, Sharon L., for supporting the channel, too. So, um, yeah. So anyway, I write my ideas down post-it notes and then they either get transferred to a comp book. Well, hello, MRS. Thank you, MRS, for the $5 super chat. If you want to send me your address, I will put you on the thank you list. Uh, MRS, email me. Email me your address if you would like a thank you sent to you. Here's my email. Send me um, where I could send you a thank you. And again, I always say this all the time. I do not give your I do not give your uh, addresses out to anybody, and I don't put you on a mailing list. So um, yeah, not even to my mom. So if you want to, you know, send me your address, it doesn't go anywhere but here. So yeah, thank you, Pacola. Thank you, Pacola. Says thanks for yeah. There's and and Pacola's. <laughs> I always trust Pope. Pacola put in my email because sometimes I put it in wrong, but Pacola usually corrects me. Uh, so anyway, <clears throat> so uh, oh well, thank you, Dillo. We try. We you know you got to write them down though. Hi, Terry L. Good to see you, Terry L. Me and Janet and you and you know our Survivor um, group, Survivor watching. We all watch Survivor. Uh, and live tweet when it came on. So there's no survivor this year because of the virus. So, um, yeah. So miss you, Terry L. Hi, Amy Berg. Oh, that's Julie Topaz again. Sorry. The chat moves quicker than I can click on it. <laughs> Hi, Painty Girl. Painty Girl, I was just mentioning you on Monday when Jen and I were thinking about doing some Thursday morning uh, before Kathy Arbor doing some uh, Thursday morning um, group videos. And uh, that can be a time when we can schedule guests because I love, I want to have lots of guests, but it's so hard to schedule. 
So I'm thinking, and Jan and I talked about it, that we could do um, a guest on Thursday morning. So Penny Girl, you had mentioned that you wanted to at some point come on. So let us know if you would like to come on a Thursday morning show. I think it would still be the same time, right, Jan, at 8.30, 9 o'clock, so we can get in and have a show before uh, Kathy Arbor comes on at 1. <coughs> so, yeah. Hi, Ray. Good morning. How you doing? When I say that, I sound like, well, never mind. I, if you watch the comic book, God. Anyway, how you doing? <laughs> Hi, Terry. Uh, Terry, yo, yo, Terry, yo, Terry. <laughs> uh, oh, Juanita, thank you so much, Juanita, for the super chat, super sticker. Thank you, Juanita. And Juanita, I used to have your address. I don't think I have it anymore. So if you'll send me your address, I will send you, um, I will send you some happy mail too. Thank you so much. Um, she spins, I've known Juanita for a long, many years of streaming and Juanita used to stream some years ago and then, uh, she has some things in her life and she's, she stopped streaming. I, I don't know if she does any kind of, she does, she did some videos, but I don't know if she does any streaming, but you can follow. She spins Juanita over on, um, IG, I call her little foot. Because she did some spinning one time and she showed her foot spinning and she has a littlest foot. So I call her, she spins Juanita little foot, AKA. <laughs> thank you so much, Juanita. Let me know, let me know uh, where to send you a thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. So Painted Girl said that would be great. Need a date and I'll be ready. Okay. Yeah. Cause I think we're going to do it on Thursday mornings. Because right now, I don't, none of the, you know, I don't know who, there may be somebody that streams early, um, you know, after Mary, but before Kathy Arbor. Ka uh, Mary Autier streams like from 4 30 to 8 30 my time. <clears throat> so I usually come on after uh, Mary. So um, that would be her Indian name. Yeah, that would be Pink Hot. Yeah, I just, I just like, uh, I like to, her, I, I don't know. I like to make people look happy and smile with their names. I love I love doing that. So yeah, she's she's Juanita Littlefoot. Um, let's see. So thanks again, Juanita. That's very kind and thoughtful of you to super chat me. <coughs> um, let's see. Domestic Fox, good morning. Uh Okay, well, I'm going to get started, guys. I'm going to get started and show you what I got at Hobby Lobby on clearance. Like I said, I spent about 25 bucks on all this, and I, I am planning on giving most, well, a lot of it away. Um, I'm going to test these out today. The um, Prima Art Alchemy Sparks paints that were normally $16.99 for a pack of three for $4.24. So I'm going to test those out just to see what they're like. And again, it, you know, every Hobby Lobby is probably different. And uh, I don't know where they're going from here as far as uh, clearancing things out. I think they just started on Friday. And um, so, uh, and then I went yesterday, you know, because I stream on Mondays. So hi, Cindy. So if she's watching. Okay, so let me go ahead and go through what I got real quick. Let's just move everything over. I do need a little something to do a test on. And then we're going to do some giveaways and color. And, and oh, my. Let's see. Um, oh, I did show, I did get that book. I don't think I showed that book. I got some books coming. Oh, and Faithful Mess on the packaging. I don't have the box here. I took everything out of the box. But I did keep this tape that was on the box and <laughs> i'm going to put this in the fibs her fibs page you know she's already got i already got a fibs page friends in the box page in um, my fibs book for faithful mess so this will go on her page uh, let's see um i just need a little scratch paper it's always so funny i've got a room full of paper and never can find just a scratch piece of paper here we go so a piece of card stuff. <laughs> I just want something to write on when I show stuff. So, um, hi, Claire. 
Hi, Flo. Anybody else coming in I missed? Thanks, everybody, for being here. Um, yeah, uh, um, I know you could just have to, and, you know, okay, I won't get into that. Okay, so anyway, this is a Prima Mixed Media um, A5, which is 5.8 by 8.3. It's 140-pound paper. And uh, I, I, I'm going to give some of this away, so I hate to unbox some of it. I'm going oh, I'm, I'm to unbox this and test these, but a lot of this stuff I'm not going to um, unpackage. But I just want you all to see. It's a, it's a mixed media book, so I'm sure it's probably kind of like the Canson mixed media. I thought the size was cool and um, spiral bound, and it, it just looks like you could do watercolor in it. So uh, I got that. Normally twelve ninety nine for three twenty four for three twenty four. Oh, thank you, Julie Topaz. Yeah, thank you for putting in my. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, so this was three twenty four, and you can't beat that. Of course, Hobby Lobby always has a forty percent off coupon in the in. If you just look it up in their weekly ad, there's always one forty percent off coupon. I think you can use it twice. I usually end up letting somebody else in front of me or in back of me that doesn't have a coupon use my second turn at it because, uh, you know, you want them to come back and support Hobby Lobby so that they'll stay in business. I was just happy mine reopened because they closed down for, I don't know, a month or something. And I didn't know if they're even going to reopen because like our Tuesday morning shut down. They're, they shut down our Tuesday morning. You know, a lot of businesses are just uh, downsizing their amount of stores. So I was glad to have found, um, I mean, for ours to reopen. Okay, so this is a Mermalicious brush set. And it looks like a soft br bristles. So it says you could use it with pastels. Uh, you could use it with pastels or paint, either one. Um and I think Xandra has this. Uh, she, I think she has it in a teal color. But the bristles look really soft. So I'm sending this to a person that I know that does watercolor. So it's normally $19.99 for $4.99. And this is like the cap that goes over this. But I think that's also could be like a little water dish. I'm not sure. But that's I think that's the cap that goes over this brush. So anyway, I just thought that looks, you know, couldn't pass that by for uh, $4.99. I was talking about buying more art supplies. Oh, oh, okay, Claire. Yes, they were. They had a lot of deals, uh, Jersey. All right, then uh, I'll open that last because I'm going to take that. I did get this. So a lot of the, well, almost all the Jane Davenport stuff was clearanced out. So I don't know if they're going to even restock anything new by Jane Davenport or if she's, if you're only going to have to buy from her store. Uh, maybe Zandra might have a clue about that, but I don't know. But all this, all the um, Jane Davenport stuff, which is older stuff, it's not new stuff. You know, uh, I don't know that she's restocking new stuff in the stores. Uh, my Michaels clearanced out all the Jane Davenport weeks before they, before, well, it was it before, yeah, I think it was before the virus that they had clearanced out all the Jane stuff. And because I guess ex expecting to get new stuff. Now, whether they're going to get new stuff or not, I just don't know. Um, Jersey says, I was using my Jane stuff yesterday that you enabled me to get on the clearance last time. Yeah, it was a great deal. And um, so I don't know if you're just going to have to buy it from Jane Davenport's site uh, directly. I don't know. But anyway, they had other things on clearance down that those aisles as well. And uh, in, they have a lot of stuff in the planner section that's clearanced out. A lot of the clearance, I mean, that's not everything. It's not every planner. It's not every sticker set. But there's a, quite a few sticker sets, you know, the 1999 ones. I didn't get any. I've got plenty. I, I'm, I'm ashamed. Of, well, not really. I was, I was afraid to show. I won't show you all my sticker sets. But I have enough sticker sets. I did not get any sticker sets. I didn't get any papers, any new planner books. I have, these are the two planners 
that I use as far as planner binders. Now, I, you know, I have my traveler's notebooks. I have my different books for different art projects. But these are my two organizing ones. Okay, let's see. Let's take off the notes. I got a notes to myself to email people or message people. And um, these are the ones. One, it, this one is my, uh, and, and I don't, I don't do dated type planners, but this is the way I organize things. And then this one I I made, I cut down tabs myself and made this one is my address book kind of thing. And so I, um, these are the two that I stay organized with, but uh, I did not need any new planners. Let's see. Hi, Kathy. Anybody else popping in? Kirsty. Uh, so... I, I didn't get anything in the planner section except this right here for Zandra. And it was the Agenda 52, which is a paper studio Hobby Lobby brand. And it was normally $5.99 for $1.49. And, you know, it's it's mermaids. So this has to go to Zandra. But uh, so it, they're post-it notes. They're post-it notes. Um, mini mini post-it notes, tab, flags, whatever you want to call them. I know, aren't they cute? So, you know, Xandra's our, mer our little mermaid. <laughs> so that's going to Z. So I have my stacks over here. Um, then I got in the same aisle, but down the aisle from the Jane stuff, which I'm going to show you some more here in a minute. They had these ribbons and their um, some of their charms and things on Claire's. Again, it's not all of them. It's not everything. Do we go dark here? Did it get a little dark? There we go. Um, <laughs> I probably put a shadow on something. Anyway, um, let's just move that up a little. There we go. Up into the light. Let's move up into the light. There we go. So these were, uh, you know, and I've used some of this type stuff in my uh, in my new books, my new uh the Asian, the Leonardo, and the space woodsy one. Uh, I, I use ribbons and things in that to make those books. Well, I think my next book is going to be India. I'm going to do an India book. Now, I have no real papers. I mean, I have collage papers. I don't have any paper sets on India. I have a couple of decorative napkins, but I think I'm going to do India. So I got this because I think this will be pretty in India. My next portfolio, um, I'm going to do an India one, and I still have two others in the stack to do. So I still have the Steampunk Mermaid one to do, and I still have, I have a couple other ones. But my next portfolio, I think I'm going to skip the two I already have planned and go straight for India. So I've got I a lot of glitter and a lot of shiny and a lot of... Um, India motifs from India. Yeah. So you like that idea, Jersey? Jersey goes, hey, India, whoa. <laughs> oh, sorry. I click on, I gotta, gotta click fast because things change. Uh, oh, well, good. Okay, get your color book set up, Claire. So I'm going to use this in the India. And again, it was $4.99 for $1.24. Same for this one. This was $4.99 for $1.24. And it's like a grow grain ribbon. So uh, I got those. I got these arrows that were normally $4.99 for $1.24. And this is heavy. These are like, like metal charms like. And so I love these arrows. I like putting arrows and stuff and pointing at things. <laughs> so I got these. They were $1.24 as well. And again, I use the, these kind of ribbons in those portfolios. So I got this one was normally $5.99 for a dollar 49 so there's enough here to do at least one if not two projects out of and i love this maroon color it's like a burgundy can't really tell the color there but it's like a burgundy color so those i got in the you know right next down from the jane line uh down there and uh got those okay so then back into the jane section and I did get two of these. And I opened them up. So I'm going to show you here. Okay, so I can do a sample. So these, these two pins right here, the Jane Davenport. And I'm not sure what line they were from. I know this was from our makeup line. These were from that makeup uh, line of stuff where everything she did was like blush and lipstick and 
eyeshadows and all that. And uh, so I didn't, uh, I, I didn't get much of that stuff when it came out. But anyway, I got a couple of clearance out items and then I got two pins. And again, I'm not sure if these were in that. And I kind of call it a makeup line, but it was stuff designed to look like makeup. Right. Oh, uh, let's see. Let's see. Do I miss anybody else coming in? Reg. Hi, Reg. I think that Reg is Janet's friend. I think Reg is from Janet's, uh, one of Janet's friends. But I might got the wrong name. Uh, Cindy Lee. Hi, Cindy Lee. So I got these two. Um, and he got two of them. So I got um, the ultimate. This is silver screen glitter. And it was normally $8.99 for $2.24. So, and I'm going to show you here. I got one here open. And then this one is the ultimate waterproof brush pen with aqua. So I'm going to show you those two. I have not tested these out. I waited for you guys. So, and again, they were both regularly $8.99 for $2.24. So you just can't, you know, you got to get a couple of stuff, you know. So uh, let's go ahead and test these out. Let's see what the silver, and the pin on the silver one is just so pretty. You know, look at that. Look at that silver, silver pin. So let's see here. Oh, it, it, it is very sparkly. Let's see if I can, I haven't done anything with it. So let's see if I can get it rolling here. It kind of is a combination of, um, uh, what was that other one called? That other pin, uh, Wink Estella. It's kind of like a Wink Estella combined with a silver gel pen. And uh, so let's see if you can see. look. There we go. And it's a brush pen. So it's a brush pen. A brush. Yeah, it's a brush pen. You know, but it's uh, like a glitter. Look how glittery that is. So yeah. So there's that one again. $8.99 for $2.24. And then this one is the aqua one. And again, it's a brush pen. But this one, I don't think this one is glitter. I think this, yeah, this is just an aqua. It's just an aqua brush pen. So I... And it's a little soft. It's a little... the the. It's not as uh, stiff as a food a, so it, it kind of wants to mash down. It's really, I, I can do it. I can do some brush lettering with it, but it's not, um, it's a little, it's a little soft. It's a little um, too flexible to do uh, much brush lettering with because uh, it wants to smash down. But uh, yeah, but it's a pretty color. It's the it's like the Jane Mermaid color, right? <laughs> it's like the Jane Mermaid color. And then there's the silver. Look how shiny that is. So I got that. Then, and I I don't know if I want to do I want to open this. I guess I'll I'll, I'll open this. Even though I, I plan on giving this away. So, but I think I'm gonna open it just to show to do a test. Okay, I'll put it back in. All right, so this right here was regularly $7.99 for a dollar ninety-nine. It's a matte gel pastel, matte gel pastel, and they have a few colors of this. I only bought one because I didn't know I didn't know what this even. I don't know if it's in a brush. I don't know what it is. I haven't ever seen this open. So let's open it. Does it open? I mean, how does it? Oh, does it twist? Oh, does it twist off? Okay. Oh, look, it's like a lip gloss. <laughs> no wonder I couldn't figure it out. So this is like a lip gloss. Oh, my gosh. So let's just see if it's water activated. And let's test out this, too. Let me get a, let me get a water brush here. Let's test this out. It's a pretty color. It's a pretty color, and it is matte. It is a matte color. And, I, it, you know, I don't know if it's going to dry completely. <laughs> we'll see what happens. I've not ever used this. All right, let's test out this brush. Okay, so that is waterproof. Did, I think it said waterproof, didn't it? Yeah, waterproof brush pen. So it it, it is waterproof, that blue, the teal. Now let's see about this. Oh, now this is going to move, I think, unless I just didn't let it dry. 
you might have to let that dry some because it's like a lip gloss it's like a lip gloss no it's not a lip gloss but it's it's like remember when she did her whole line she did a whole line of um stuff that was based off of makeup i pastel um eyeshadows and blushes and and lipsticks you know so um anyway but it, it's just the, you know the packaging everything it's 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 the cute that gets us every time all right so i'm gonna put that back in there again this was 7.99 for a dollar 99 and there are a lot of colors of this no i'm not putting it at church because don't put it on your lamps people yeah, i'm sure it's probably uh non-toxic but at the same time you don't want to put art supplies on your lips <laughs> so anyway there's that and then this, um, these are just uh, like foam applicators, like makeup applicators. You can use it for a lot of different projects. Normally $7.99, you know, I would never, just me, I wouldn't pay $7.99 for a makeup wedge, not makeup wedges, but makeup um, applicators. But it was for $1.99. So for $1.99, I got it. And uh I don't know how well they, they and what, you know, what kind of um, uh, foaminess they are, but they come in the little container, like double-sided. So for $1.99, I thought that was okay, you know, for some double-sided. There's a lot in there. <laughs> and then we go. <laughs> I know. I know, I know, Riri. <laughs> so anyway, that was for $1.99. So that was all the Jane stuff that I got. And then the, those ribbons that I bought uh, for projects. Then these two things of paint, which are, I'm, I, I waited to take them out of the box to show, you know, before I did all, I didn't test any of this stuff before you, you guys, uh, Came, you know, our, sh our show today. So these are normally $16.99 Sparks Acrylic Paint Art Alchemy by Prima. Um, and uh, they're glittery. And Janice uh, says, I'm going to need them for a different, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, star systems. <laughs> All right, let's see. I might have to untape that. There we go. And these are normally, hang on, let me get some scissors here. It's taped. And I've not ever used any of these. I've used a couple of the uh, silks back in the day. I don't know if these are anything like them, but they're, they're glitter or shiny. They're sparks. I don't know how, if they're glitter or if they are um, metallics or what. But it says, great quality metallic acrylic paint with beautiful shimmer and shine you've never seen before soft creamy and rich in color with the most beautiful sparkly effect great for artists and decorative use now i would i, I will probably use this in color books as well uh maybe i might use it today in my faithful mess book that we uh you know we got our faithful mess um uh, color books in that we're doing giveaways today by the way oh thank you del lobo thank you so much for the super chat let me write you down make sure you email me where's my pen here we go thank you del lobo email me your address if you would like a happy mail thank you thank you so much i wrote it down I always try to keep my keep my post-it notes handy <laughs> thank you so much for supporting the channel del lobo um, are we going to call? Yes, we're going to do some coloring today, Claire, uh, in one of the books that uh, we're also giving away two of today from our faithful mass. Here comes my kinnies. So, um, yeah, I'll keep one of these just as a, a, so I know what, you know, they do. But anyway, this is carnival and uh fantasy and it's showing here a before and after that you can paint just like acrylic paint you can paint on anything with acrylic paint not your cats don't paint on your cats 
<laughs> but these were normally $16.99 for $4.24. And again, they had a third set, but the third set looked, it had like some of the same kind of colors. It had another gold and a different blue, I think. So I just got two sets. So I got these two, and Janet says I need to do, um, I need to do, what do you call it, uh, some star nebulas and stuff with these. Uh, no, I don't think they're a paste, Debbie. I think they're uh, acrylic paint. That's what it says anyway. It says acrylic paint, not paste. So I'm going, I got, uh, I'm going to test. I got, I'm going to test them right here. We're going to test. Let's see. Uh, hi, Lisbeth. Miss Gigi. Yes, we got the cat last week. You're getting the cat again this week. <laughs> Oh, you got a cat last week. What kind of cat did you get, Miss Gigi? What kind did you get? And um, do you have other cats or, ha or have you had cats before? And what kind did you get? Janet and I were talking. Y'all know Janet just lost her um, Roxy over the weekend. So, um, yeah, it, you know, it, it's hard when you lose them. You know, and hers was like, I think, not 18, 19. And our Walter that we had, you know, a few years ago, he was like 18 as well when he uh, passed the the uh, over the Rainbow Bridge. It's hard. Um, let's see. Well, thank you, Del Lobo. Thank you so much for this. Email, don't forget to email me your address now. OK, so that I can send you a thank you. Uh, oh, they're always up here. I have to, sometimes I'll sleep over here on the side and when I'm working, but when I'm working on the big projects like the, uh, like this, the, uh, let's see if I can get it, <laughs> like this huge samurai owl that I'm working on, you know, they have to get down because, or if, if I'm doing pan pastels, that's a big no, no, uh, the pan pastels. Because uh, those, when they get that pan pastel in their fur, it is impossible to get out. You just got to let it, you know, wear out. Um, let's see. I was trying to see what kind of cat. Yeah. I know, losing pet you've had for a long time is like, well... It's like losing a little family member because you've had them for so long, right? Let's see. Oh, thank you, Val. Let's see. Loretta, I know I'm missing people coming in. Okay, so let's go ahead and see if my cat will let me do a test on these colors. And again, they're called Sparks Prima Art Alchemy. Let's see what happens here. Let's see if they got lids. I mean, like got papers on them. Yeah, they do. I probably don't even need to use a brush. I can probably just go like this. Because I'm throwing those away. Okay, let me get it. All right, let me move this for a minute and get a, a baby wipe because she'll walk on that. Just so I'm not making a mess. Okay, so they are very sparkly. Look. Look how sparkly that is. Shimmery, I should say. Um, it's not as glittery as that glitter pin that we showed. Baby, okay, baby, baby. Just move over just a little. Thank you. It doesn't have the glitter that that uh, Jane Davenport pen does, but it's very shimmery, very metallic. It's got a little bit of glittery light to it. So this one is called Ginger Magic. This one is called... Butterfly spells, butterfly spells. Okay, let's take this off here. I'm gonna wipe the bulk of it off and then put them down here. And again, these are from two different sets. All right, and I'll show. I'll hold them all up here in a minute. And I'm not shaking them. I'm not sure I'm supposed to or not. But uh, yeah, they're very, they're very shimmery. Okay. This one is this purple one is Iris Potion. 
And let me um, let me get some water on a brush here. Just I don't want to stick my water brush in there or here, Stephen. A little bit of water. I want to just see what happens when you get it wet. And I don't know if it's water waterproof. There's acrylic paint, so and that's uh, this was wet, so of course it's smearing when it's wet. Uh, we'll wait and see when it's dry if it moves. Okay, then the next three here, we got fairy wings. I'll hold them up here in just a minute, guys. Just kind of open them up for the first time. That's fairy wings, and it's a, it's a green color. And then the next one I got here is... Oh, that, that one, the little... What you call it was already I can get, let's see if I'm gonna have to get a pokey tool or something let's get an exacto knife because the the white thing the little white cover all right let's see what this one's called let me clean that up now you don't want to glue your lid shut all right Made a mess on that. I'll get another baby wipe. Okay, this one is called. God, let me get another baby wipe. I made a mess on that. There we go. Okay, this one is called Mermaid Sparkle. That one. And then this one is called Unicorn Hair. <laughs> I like the names are kind of cool, aren't they? Unicorn Hair. Let's put that one right there. All right. So we're going to let those dry. And I'll show them to you while they're wet so you can see how shiny they are. And uh, after they're dry, we'll see, we're going to see how uh, waterproof they are. They're acrylic paints. They should be waterproof. Um, thanks, everybody, for popping in. I know I'm missing people. Vern, Verno. Um, so look how pretty they are, though. And of course, I'm not, I didn't smooth them out. I just scraped them off the cap. So if we use them with anything, here, let's see if I can. Oh, that's already starting to dry. Oh, but you know, you don't want to use, you don't want to use your water brushes with acrylic paint. I wouldn't. I only use, I only use my water brushes for watercolor. Because, you know, you get any paint up in there and it's going to crust it up. So, anyway, there we go. Those are my new co paint colors, shimmery. And, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens when they dry. I'll set them aside until they dry. And, uh, and we'll see how, how we can use them in, a, you know, a book or, you know, a project. All right, so let's put this somewhere where the cat's not going to jump up on. It's over there, I think. So I think I showed you all my new... That's my haul. That's the haul. Keep one of these. Keep this in a in a project book. I'll set it up here for now. All right. Um, so our faithful mess... Let me straighten out my camera here. Our faithful mess sent seven... Of these books I'm gonna give away two of them today uh, I'm gonna to give away two to us only and then I'll do a separate international giveaway and you can either pick if you would like a print of um, the peace law or when I finish my um, when I finish my samurai owl I'm gonna make a print out of this and so you can choose uh, international you can choose which one you want because I can't mail books international. It's just too expensive and there's no guarantee. I mean, I'm still waiting on people in Canada that haven't got their stuff. I don't think Devin Rex has got her Susie dog drawing yet. 
Oh, there's Devin right there. Devin, have you got your have you got Susie drawing yet? And that's been going on what three weeks at least three weeks. So yeah. So I don't know. I haven't heard that she got her dog drawing that I did. I did post it. I'll show it to y'all. I put it on uh, Instagram. If y'all want to see a lot of my drawings and color book pages and different things that we've done here, uh, I try to post a lot of them on on uh, IG. So let me go over here. and uh, So I sent her the original. This is her Susie. I sent her the original. And uh, here's her little face. And I don't know if she's got it yet. So hopefully it gets there up in Canada. Um, so anyway, what I was going to say is I am, um, I'm not sending books around the world anymore. It's a minimum of $25 just to mail a book. And so um, books will be in, uh, U.S. only, but then I do a separate international giveaway. We're just the international uh, people can um, do be in the giveaway and I'll send a print. Okay, see, it hasn't got there yet. And that's been at least three weeks. When did I post it? Let's see, when did I post? Because I, I sent it out at the same time I posted it. I posted it August 9th. So it's going on, well, two, yeah, it's going on three weeks. So, yeah. So anyway, Our Faithful Mess sent us a bunch of these uh, books. And again, it's by David Haben, who did the, the Search for the Light Bulb Burglar, which I do have. I, don't, I didn't pull it. I don't know if I, if it's, I can put my hand right on it. Probably not. Uh, but anyway, um, this is about two explorers, two colorful, two colorful journeys. Whose path will you follow? I'm going to go ahead and read the back here. Hi, Tracy. Anybody else coming in? Leslie? Anybody I missed? Your new coloring adventure awaits in this original story featuring two explorers on separate exp exp ex uh, expeditions. Called upon by unknown forces, the explorers set out on their respective journeys to examine their immersive environments, complete with amazing and intricate backdrops, awaiting for your favorite pens, pencils, or even watercolor. The paper is like, it kind of has that watercolory kind of feel to it. Take your mind off the stress of modern life as you color in a volcano strewn island and a celestial campground. Filled with expansive and spectacular scenery, cuddly beasts, and magnificent modes of transportation, you can start from the front and experience one story, but you can also start from the back and experience another. See what happens when the two stories meet in the middle. Featuring thick, high-quality art paper, the lay-flat binding stays open so you can color with ease. And they are perforated. It says tear out the finished designs from the perforated pages and display your personalized artwork to relive your coloring experience. David Habenink Haben is an artist, illustrator, instructor, and author, art, author of The Search for the Light Bulb Burglar. David and his family live in the beautiful mountains of Utah. To see more of his work, and visit him at Habenink, H-A-B-B-E-N, ink.com and uh, so the ISBN is 9781624144639 okay so i already looked through it and i already started in my copy um oh thank you <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> Okay, so you can go from front to back, and you're following this guy through the, the Explorer uh, journey. Or you can start in the back and go this away, and there's a girl that's going this away. Okay, so, and, you know, she has the long hair, and that's just, you know, I'm just kind of distinguishing them by the hair. She has long hair, he has short hair. 
And then they meet in the middle. So let me show you the middle. Here. So here's the middle of the book. So if you follow him, you're fall, you're going this away and here. And if you do the, the other explorer girl, then you go this way and you meet there. So I thought it was very clever. I thought it was so clever that they would, <laughs> that, you know, he would do this kind of a, a, a book. And um, the pages are not real, real intricate. So you could, you know, you're not spending days or weeks, although so, they're swirly, but they're not, uh, they're not so finely detailed that you have to use a gel pen or a, a fine tip pen, you know, to, to work in it. Cause some, some color books that they are like that. You have, it's a lot of detail. I mean, they're detailed, but they're not so tiny, right? They have little tiny elements, but the whole page is not so tiny. So um, here's one explorer. It looks like he's looking at the earth up there. And so I'm just going to kind of flip through it. And uh, it's just so, you know, I love these kind of things where you could, it could be upside down, right side up. The world's turned up different ways. And so he's going through all these different places, camping out. And, you know, if you wanted to, you could write your own story. You could write your own story to go with it. All the pages are perforated and it is, um, it's a thick paper with a little bit of a like a watercolor paper feel tooth to it so you can see here there's just lots of different little adventures and um, this would be you know how I think this would be fun this would be fun if you and a child colored it together or if you colored it and let the child make up the story or both I would say do it together or even if you just have the book and let the child make up the story and then let them color it after you all after you wrote the story for it. I think that would be so fun to do. Thank you, Christina Co for the super chat. Thank you so much. <clears throat> um, I love you, Didi. I hope that this will help you in some way. Well, it will help with the postage, <laughs> Christina. It will. And, and any super chat helps with uh, the channel. Yeah, y'all bought me a new camera. You bought me a microphone. Um, yeah, uh, you uh, help with the um, the StreamYard, my monthly, because I have the monthly subscription to StreamYard, the pro edition. So, you know, when y'all do Super Chats or PayPal tip jars, that, that pays for my uh, StreamYard subscription, and it does help the channel. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, and there's a uh, Pacola. Thank you for supporting. Please email me. Email me your address so I can send you out a print. Okay, Christina, thank you so much. I know that's <laughs> way to go. <laughs> thank you, Cheryl. Uh, so thank you, thank you so much. Thanks so much, Christina. It does help. Hi, Elaine. Anybody else popping in? Uh, so I think this would be a great way to um, have your, you know, your, your, your child, your grandchild, or just a, you know, if you're a, a teacher or a, some kind of a caregiver to children, this would be a great way to, uh, you know, let them write the story, let them look at the picture and look it over. And, and you could, you know, take, you could write it while they're talking it. You know, they can say, well, you know, that that's not a dragon tail. That's a, you know, you can write down whatever they say and make a story out of it. That's true, Flo. Thank you so much. The thumbs up do help. And comments, guys. I know because this is a live chat, we don't get a lot of comments in the comment section because everybody's commenting here. <laughs> so, But uh, it does help uh, when you do leave comments in the comment section. And I do try to answer within a week uh, all the comments. I try to get to all the comments uh, within the week. And, and thank you for all the, we have a couple hundred people here and, and most of them are lurkers. Thank you, lurkers. I appreciate all that as well, all of you as well. But if you want to be in the giveaway, you got to come, you got to come in the chat. You got at least got to come in the chat long enough to put in a number in a little while. <laughs> so anyway, I just think this is just really a clever, clever, you know, way to, 
you could write, you know, have the kids write their own stories. And it, then again, here he's at the edge of the road there. And that's when he sees across there and she's over here waving. Now I'm going to go the other way, the other way in the book. And she starts out in a summer in a submarine. Okay. <clears throat> So she starts out in a sub, sub, submarine, submarine, and then she gets out here and she's waving, and then she gets out, and then she's on like, it, it could be a mountain, it could be a hill, it could be ice, it could be a forest, it could be, you know, um, like just, you know, uh, snow-covered mountains, it could be whatever you want, you know. Then she's knocking at this door or goes in. Now she's going into this cave. It looks like crystals. I'll show you how I'm doing, uh, how I'm approaching it. Because uh, I've already started working in my copy. She comes to the edge here. <clears throat> There's a giant sea turtle or some kind of a turtle. Flying turtle, sea turtle. She gets on his back. And then she ends up over another place on land. He flies or swims away. Now she's climbing a hill. Then now she comes up. Is that it? Yeah. She, the paper's kind of thick, so i got to make sure I'm flipping just one. She comes to a boat. She's in the boat. The big wave. There's a fish. She gets tumped over. Tumped over. <laughs> And then uh, she's uh, on the fish, leaves the fish, and she's still got her uh, water, she still has her uh, undersea helmet on there. And now she's swimming, she's coming up to a, a hole in the uh, cave there. She comes up out of the cave, and there she is right there, right there coming out of the cave. Climbing up another hill, and this looks like a nest with a bird in it. And then she gets on the bird, flies out of the nest, lands up here on this cliff, and that's where they meet. So front and back. I know, isn't it awesome, Tracy? So front and back. So they meet in the middle. And it's just really cool. And I think that any kid would love to do this. So how I'm doing it, I am going to go. This is how and I know y'all going to go, oh, my gosh. But how I'm going to do the story, I'm starting with the girl from the back. But I'm going to go. Every page is going to have some kind of a star portal in it. Every page is going to have something like this on it. So this is just the back and front cover. It's like these are the two dimensions here. So I'll do the same thing here that I did here, right? Because they have the, a duplicate on the front and the back uh, fly leaf. And every page I'm going to do something with the, um, I'm going to do something with a, a, a star uh, dimension. So then here's the information here. There's about the author. So here's the first one. So it's, it may not be a lot. It may just be a little. I may extend this some. But anyway, so here every every page is going to have this feature to it. It's going to tie it all together. So the first thing I'm going to do while working in this book, I'll be thinking about the story and the colors I might want to use. But I'm going to first go through the whole book and do something with that on every single page. I'm going to do um, a star dimension on every page. So, and this one I haven't put any stars on yet. I just started there. So I can either splatter it. Um, and some of it I did with acrylic paint. And some of it I just did with a, a ink, um, you know, a Faber-Castell ink pen. And then I can just use a pasta or I can splatter paint. But or then I can go in here and do splattering paint looks so much more natural than trying to, it, you know, even as random as you try to do this, it, it never looks as random as it does when you um, when you splatter it. It just never looks the same. Look, I'll show you on my uh, on my big. This thing's huge. See how this is splattered? It just looks so much more natural 
than trying to dot all that out. <clears throat> and I'm still working on him. He's got uh, got a ways to go. I still have a lot of detail in the face and all the rest in the wings to do. But this is going to be my September print. <clears throat> um, so anyway, when you when you just uh, dot it yourself, and uh, and I left some of the areas where there's like a swirl here, so I can put those swirls back in with the. Uh, the white Posca. Oh, thank you, Mrs. GG. Thank you. So, but every page in the book, and I, you know, I haven't decided what section or where. I, I kind of keep it fresh by not planning that part out too much. Like, I don't want to go through the whole book and say, okay, this section is going to be where I put the star shine or this section, because I want to keep it a little bit of fresh and, and entertaining for myself <laughs> as well, you know. So, um, but that's my plan is to go through the whole book and put a star dimension in every page to tie all the pages together. And then I'll go back and color. I'll go back and color it all in. You can kind of see there. Then I might put a, a shooting star. Might put a shooting star in uh, in some of them. There's a the little swirl around. The, this this swirl right here was here in black, but because I'm doing the star shot, I mean the star dimension in black, I'm just going to go ahead and put those uh, swirls back in with the white pen. With the white. Thank you, Bacola. Bacola, you're just such an awesome mod. And Julie and Janet are too. <laughs> so, uh, and Eileen when she's here. <laughs> so there we go. <clears throat> All right. So that's what I'm going to do on every page. I'm going to have a section and I might have a little bit of reflection, like maybe some of this is reflecting over here or just one little spot. So I think that would be, let me just do this with a pen just so I can do it quick. So, um, oops, let me get over here. So I'm going to do a giveaway here. I'll, I'll do it at 10, which is about 15 minutes. I'm going to give away two of these books. And thank you again, Faithful Mess, for sending them. And she always sends plastic sleeves to put them in. I, you can mail them in that in the sleeves that she sent. I do, I put them, I'll put them in the sleeve. She sends these uh, hot air balloon sleeves, you know, envelopes. You can mail them in this, but I will put them in an, uh, I'll put them in this and then put them in another uh, envelope to mail them. And uh, thank you, Faithful, for the um, stamps. So, yeah, she's, she, she's, uh, this is how Faithful Mess supports the channel. And, uh, and if y'all don't follow Faithful Mess on YouTube, she also has an Etsy. And uh, follow, it's Faithful Mess with two L's. Faithful Mess. She's also on Instagram. And uh, so follow her and uh, her channel. She has a lot of uh, awesome, she has chill streams as well. She has nice chill streams and um, happy mail openings and just a little of everything. So, um, coloring, a little of everything over there. So, it's just something like that. Um, all right. So, you can kind of see where we're going with the book. Pacola says, Eileen's a wonderful person. We love Eileen. She is our art guru. She just sleeps late. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I like to pick on her. We have to pick on Eileen. Eileen is E T E E. That stands for Eileen the Enabler Elf. She's an awesome enabler. And she knows all the new stuff coming out and where to get it. And she takes a lot of the classes. Now a lot of them are online, but uh, she used to take a lot of them in, in stores where the um, artists would come to the different uh, stores and do classes. 
but now I think most of all of them are doing them online. But Eileen still takes a lot of classes and she knows a lot about products, where to get them, who's selling them. So, yeah, she is for sure, Pacola. Um, all right, so I'm going to set this aside. I might work on a couple more pages, just painting in some of the background, just so you can see how it's going to go. And uh, let me move some of these. I'm going to pull two. I'm going to pull two of the books here to, for giveaway. And uh, we'll do some give, more giveaways throughout the, you know, I try to do a couple of um, giveaways a month. All right, so before we do that, I'll just spend a few more minutes um, before we do the giveaway, and, and I'll work a little bit in this book. I might go ahead and do some color in it just so that y'all don't have to just watch me do black and white today. But my plan is to go through the whole book, do all the black uh, star uh, portals and then go and figure out the colors. But I might do a page or two just to see, just so y'all don't get bored watching me do black and white. Um, let's see. So I did get this book. Uh, I think I had this before and I gave it to camera and I've had a few books like this, but I always, these are inspiring books to me. So I did get this at my books a million and I do have a couple other books coming in. Let me check my phone here when these orders are coming in. Hi, Gail. I have a few things coming in this weekend, and I'm hoping to go up to Denise's this weekend. And if I go to Denise's, you know that it means going to her Barnes & Noble, which is the best Barnes & Noble in Georgia, I think. Uh, so um, we will be going <laughs> we'll be going up there this weekend. Uh, that's the plan anyway, unless depending on the weather and everything. But uh, And y'all uh, say a prayer for all the people in the path of uh, Hurricane... Laura, I think is what it's called down there in Texas and Louisiana. So, uh, yeah, we'll say, uh, you know, uh, that they stay safe and that it's not as bad as the weather people like to make you think it is. But I know they're trying to make, make sure you're safe. Okay, so let me go over here to my Amazon. Let's see. Um, yeah, I think they're still coming. Yeah. Oh, no. Okay, I got one that was supposed to arrive Saturday is now arriving Friday. The other one's supposed to arrive Sunday, which maybe now will be bumped up to Saturday. I'm not gonna tell you, I'm not gonna show you what they are. When I get them, y'all know I show everything, all my books. Um, hi Art with Como. Bye. Are you leaving? Uh, good evening and bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> Uh, hi and bye art <laughs> okay so anyway i got this uh, anatomy for fantasy artist a new expanded edition again i think i've bought this before let me see what year it is i don't think it's exactly the same one uh yeah originally first edition was in 2005 revised and updated in 2013 so i if i had bought this some i probably had the 2013 edition and um, but I have a few books like this that are good for reference, but they're also just good for inspiration and uh, and uh, practice and ideas. These are the kind of things I like to do. When I, I don't really know. I'm not working on a project, which is rare. Uh, I'm not working on anything right now. So let me just do some anatomy practice or, you know, in a sketchbook watching, you know, watch the something on TV, the History Channel or Discovery or watch Josh Gates, you know, of course now he's not traveling the world. He's sitting behind a desk. If y'all watch Josh Gates, <laughs> anyway, uh, my, and my mom and I text each other what we're watching. Like well, if we watch a Hallmark mystery, which are all reruns now, um, if we watch a Hallmark mystery on Sunday night or if we watch something on the History Channel, we, my mom and I text each other. And we talk about what's going on. And we're but mom and I both go, Josh needs to get out from behind that desk and go out in the field again. <laughs> so anyway, uh, mom and I do some TV watching together like that and text each other. And uh, but anyway, so if I'm not texting mom and watching something with her, you know, you can always be uh, sketching. You, you know, I, I, at least I can. I can sketch and watch TV at the same time. You like Josh Gates, Jane? Yeah, he's awesome. He's hilarious. If y'all don't follow him on uh, Facebook, uh, yeah, he's awesome. Of course, now that he's got married and has a kid or two, I don't think he gets out in the field as much. He sends his uh, co, 
workers, <laughs> his younger, his younger two uh, co-workers out with uh, in the field. This was before the virus. Um, and they would go out and he would only go out periodically. So hopefully Josh will get back out in the field a couple of times a year once everything settles down. You was you're gonna get this book, Christina? Oh well, good. I'm gonna show it. Um, hi, noonies or nannies. I don't know if it's nannies, um, but uh, yeah, nanny or noonie. I guess noonie would have two O's. So is it nanny? Nanny. That's a that's a like I don't know. I see flowers coming out of that name. Okay, so this is Anatomy for a Fantasy Art, Essential Guide to Creating Action Figures in Fantastical Forms, Glenn Fabry, with additional material by Mikey, Michael Cunningham and Ben Cormack. And um, make the unreal look real with this unique guide to inv inv inventive anatomy and discover how to create fantastical figures and for graphic novels fantasy art sci-fi comics and computer games of course this is very you know it's a very in-depth and um if y'all have seen me show my um the the sketchbooks that i got a couple of years ago that miss melodies gave me for my birthday a couple uh, maybe three years now two or three years ago where she sent me all those um let me go grab one just so you can see Okay, I just grabbed all five. <laughs> I grabbed all five of them. So, and, I'll, and if you want, I'll read, kind of review these again. These are sketching from the imagination. They're 3D, 3D Total Publishing is who published these. And I'll show, I'll flip through some of these. I have to be careful. I mean, this channel is not for kids. And I, I try to keep it family friendly though. But there is nudity, you know, um, in, in some of these, this artwork. So I try to, uh, you know, be careful with that. Uh, not that I have anything against drawing, drawing nudes. You do that when you're in uh, any kind of art program. But anyway, um, I'll show those in a minute. And uh, so if you are just like stuck, you don't know what to draw, you don't know, you know, and, and of course, um, um, Imagine FX magazine has a lot of these kind of things for you to you could draw from. And um, so if, you, if you're just stuck and you want to keep your hand um, fluid, then, you know, pick up some of these books or, and or magazines to practice your drawings. Now, I'm not saying copy this and put it out as your own. I'm not saying that. Uh, but if you need practice or want to practice or just keep, keep your hand, uh, you know, fluid, then these are good things to practice from. And... Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, you have to use reference. I don't care what anybody says. All artists use references. Don't let anybody tell you, oh, you didn't make that up out of your head. Then, you know, don't let anybody tell you that BS. Seriously, <laughs> all artists use references. That doesn't just because you use a reference doesn't mean you copy it. You know, I think people have a mis they've misconstrued thinking that, oh, you use a reference, you're copying it, you know, or you got a tracing paper or something like that. No. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. So, all right. So let me just go through a couple of these books for you before then we'll do our giveaway. And uh, I hope you all are enjoying the show. I hope you all are enjoying the show. I'm going to try to kind of flip. I don't, don't know if there's any real, there may be some, um, Clo there's some uh there i think they're all closed i think everybody's closed in this one just saying um <laughs> so so there's just lots of different um the section one is fantasy artist master class section two is a figure reference file section three is a cast of characters and uh so anyway it's just an awesome book of references and projects and practice so and there's just so much diversity in this and um anatomy and you know poses 
facial expressions. And even if you just did these pr as practice, you're going to learn so much about just how um, it's hard to explain how much, like, let's just say you're drawing with a pencil. You'll, you'll feel how much pressure you put. Your hand will get used to putting a certain amount of pressure uh, on the lines you're doing. Uh, let me get, where's that piece of, I need another scratch piece of paper. So when you're drawing something and whether you're sketching it out or, you know, however, but you'll, you'll, you'll be able to, you, you just know how much line pressure and, and this kind of stuff is just, you have to feel it yourself. You can't, nobody can say push down, you know, on your line weight uh, this much or that much. It has to come with feeling it yourself and how much you practice and how much you do it. And, uh, and what you can do with it. And that's pencil or pink. Y'all know I like to draw with uh, a ballpoint pen. All my uh, movie monsters from Inktober, I drew them all with a ballpoint pen. But the thing is, is people, oh, well, you can't erase. Well, but the thing is about a ballpoint pen, you can get thick and thin lines and the thin lines you can ignore. And uh, there's just so much you can do. You, you'd be surprised at how much uh, shading and light and dark you can get with the ballpoint pen. And, and it doesn't, you know, well, it can smear. I mean, a ballpoint pen, you know, that can build up ink on the tip. you got to kind of wipe that off every now and then. But it's not going to smear like a pencil, right? Uh, I, I don't like this in, in my sketchbook. So most of my sketching in sketchbooks is either done with my uh, blue lead graph gear because it doesn't smear, or I do it with the um, pen. I either do it with the ballpoint pen or just a Faber-Castell pen, and then going in and, you know, you can add different, you know, extra thick lines or uh, different uh, thicknesses with your lines with either a dip pen or with a brush pen, and, uh, and then you can continue on. You can add more. You can do more shading. Um, and do all kinds of things just with a pen and it doesn't smear that's I, I just don't like this in my sketchbook that's just me you know some people you know they don't care um i, I don't like i don't like that smeary stuff <laughs> and of course you can spray it i know you can spray it, but when you're working in a sketchbook a sketch is a, is a sketchbook is for ideas and notes and quick doodles and stuff i'm not going to go take the time to fix a tiv my quick doodles and stuff. I would just as soon draw with the pen. That's just me. But I know a lot, you know, when I drew this the big owl, I sketched it out in pencil. I sketched him out in pencil. And then as after I uh, got the basic line uh, lines done, then I erased the pencil. And now I'm going back in and adding all the details right now. And I still have a lot more to go, but just so you can kind of see. Uh, and then I can go back in here. See, now I'm adding like the little cracks looking things in the texture of the armor and stuff like that. I didn't have that penciled in. You know, I didn't have all these little dots penciled in. Um, this is, you know, this is white dots on top of black paint. Uh, I did all this after I erased all the pencil. And now I'm going back in and adding that. And I'm not an inker. Um, I did, you know, the, the, the only times that I really do much, a lot of inking, I should say. I always do a little bit because, you know, calligraphy and stuff. But um, uh, my inking is usually just relegated to the month of October when I do 31 uh, ink drawings for the month of October, which I've done for five years. This, this October will be my sixth, my sixth year of doing Inktober. Uh, and I never have followed any of the prompts that are the uh, official Inktober prompts. I always make my own because the prompts are kind of all over the place. They're not one theme or they're not, you know, I like my 31 days to be a theme. Like I did cats and calligraphy where I drew my cats in costume one year. I did kanji uh, symbols and drawings one year. I did anything under the sea. Last year I did movie monsters my way. And one year I did um, 
Celtic knots and Celtic knots and started with reptiles, but I ran out of reptiles. So I started just using other things, but yeah. So um, thank you. I have not finished the feathers flow. Uh, I'm still working on them. Hi, Judy. So anyway, I like sketching with, uh, I like sketching myself, even though I don't do a lot of pen and ink finished drawings that much throughout the year. Cause you know, most of my work is done. Um, my professional uh, commissions are portraits, which are done with color pencil and now pan pastel. So I don't do a lot of pen and ink professionally, but I still like doing it. And I love sketching. I love sketching. I love drawing. I love doing all this kind of practice stuff, but I like doing it with a pen. That's just me. I like my ballpoint pens. And of course you can do, um, you have, you know, different colors of ballpoint pens, you know, ballpoint pens come in a lot of different colors, just the big ballpoint pens, you know, big biro they're called in Europe. And, and you can do all different colors too. So don't feel like, Oh, well, I don't like just drawing, you know, I like pencils in different colors. Well, you can, you can uh, sketch with the, um, sketch with the big pens and now's the time to get them you can get those packs of colors for a couple of dollars uh you know in the school supply section you know walmart target wherever you buy school supplies office max office depot they all carry big pens you know that's when you stock up on them and they last a good while and you know even though the ink can kind of ball up on the ball um, keep a Kleenex or a tissue by you so that every now and then, that's what I do. Because it can get, it can gunk up on the tip. And then you're going to have a blob of ink that will smear. So if you just have something where you can just kind of roll the tip off every now and then. And, um, and then go back to sketching. Okay. Oh, uh, let's see. We got Andrea's baking. Uh, Pacola has to get her tea. I think uh, as soon as Pacola gets back from getting her tea, we will do our giveaway. Okay. In the meantime, I'll watch for her to come back. In the meantime, I'm going to just kind of show you this book and maybe a couple of these other uh, 3D publishing ones that I love these for inspiration. I love eye candy. It inspires me to look at this stuff and to uh, just get ideas. And again, guys, not just visual ideas, but written ideas. Anytime you get an idea, you know, that's why we call it the Society of Idea Collectors. Write it down. Like, you know, this guy over here, he's a big, burly, like, um, weightlifter type guy. You know, he could, he could be, he could be a troll. He could be a, he, you could make them anything. So if you, if you get an idea when you see these characters and you say, Oh, I think, you know, she'd look good as a princess. Well, write those notes out like princess in a pink dress. If you want, you know, uh, don't just you know look and say, Oh, well, it has to be this. It has to be a Conan looking person. Well, why, you know, make sure you write down your ideas. So they do have some actual um, figures in here, like different lighting hitting the light a different way so they have a little you know uh information on lighting and uh the direction the light direction and then here they've done pencil again i would do this all in ink that's just me because i like trying in ink but if you want to shade or use your pencil you know um you know smudge it with your finger or a, a pencil you know a pencil smudgy um or whatever but um Write down your ideas as they come to you, you know, when you're looking at a book like this, you don't have to just see, oh, well, there's just this one, you know, steampunk looking crow woman badly, you know, it could be, it could be anything else. So, uh, Pacola's back from tea. Thank you, Judy. So, um, but they give you lots of scenarios figure reference files. So here, and there are places, I'm going to show you this one in the book, but there are places online that you can go for free, put in YouTube, put in drawing poses or poses for artists, and you will come up with different uh, places that have poses for you to draw them from. 
so that you can draw. And I think you can set the times on some of them, or you can always just uh, pause the video. Just, you know, there's different places that have different pose sites. So you can have a minute or two, you get five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever you want. I like to draw fast and loose and sketchy. But, you know, if you want to get more detail in it, of course, you're going to take more time. So anyway, this book has different poses. And here they've transformed him into like a Conan type character. So. And different angles. Like, look how big that foot is when you look at it. You, you know, when you uh, look at something in, in uh, a perspective, there's something that, you know, unless you are like Mike S. Miller, Blacklist Universe, who's been drawing uh, comic people and characters for almost 30 years, you're not going to automatically know that this foot, look how big that foot is compared to his head. This is perspective that takes a lot of practice to get, to grasp, and to draw well. Something like this, because look at that. Look how big his foot is. It's three times as big as his head, but you wouldn't really get that. Yeah, foreshortening is tricky. <laughs> Exactly. But you wouldn't understand that unless you drew a lot of bodies, you know, and a lot of characters. So um, you just have that's that comes with practice and years of. Uh, but if you do want to see someone that's awesome at that kind of work, it is Mike S. Miller at Blacklist Universe. And uh, yeah. So anyway, so there's a lot of different poses and then turning the the guys pose into action characters and stuff like that. All this is great practice. Sit down with a book like this and try, you know, make it a goal like for a month that you're going to draw everything in this book. If you're not used to drawing every day, I mean, I draw every day, but if you're not used to drawing every day, get a book like this and make it your goal to draw everything just for your own self, just for your own practice. Get you a sketchbook, get a book like this, and draw every single thing in here, <laughs> probably more than once. Fill a page. Fill a page with just this one character, you know, and draw and draw and draw. That's how you get good. <laughs> Devin says turning his six-pack into a 24-pack. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you know, draw them over and over and over. That's, that's the only way you're going to get good at it. I'm telling you. I'm going to be perfectly honest. You are not going to get good at drawing bodies and figures and characters unless you just draw thousands of them. <laughs> not just 10. Not just 100. You've got to draw these and draw these and draw and draw. And um, so anyway, and then now we're getting into uh, specific characters. Barbarians and Sonya and just different um, different characters. There's a couple of pages on each. So you can, uh, you know, get ideas for clothing. And, and another thing for like clothing, I look like, look how this is like a kimono. Um, if you look up different, make, make your own list, make you a list of uh, different cultures you know, Japanese, American Indian, India from, you know, the Indian, like the, from India, <laughs> as opposed to American Indians, uh, the Mayans, the, you know, the, the outback in Australia, the, you know, make you a list of all the different cultures and not just the cultures we have now, but go back in history, go back in history, make you a list, start with just a list, start with the list of all the cultures you can think of. And then think back to the Renaissance or go into um, like fashion history and not just American fashion history, but, you know, Japanese or, you know, Chinese or different cultures, Vietnam, uh, the Balinese. Go to look at their different fabrics, their patterns, the colors they use, the colors in their fabrics. So that when you if you do characters, you can have original characters and recombine them. Recombine me. What would happen if you mixed it like a Japanese kimono with um, American Indian patterns, you know, in it? I mean, there's just so many things that you can do that you can reinvent different uh, things like that. But you have to write it down. You have to sketch it out. If you try to keep it in your head, 
you will not remember it. I, you just will not remember it. I mean, I've got thousands of ideas in my head and <laughs> you will not remember it if you don't write it down or at least write it out, you know, write the words out of what you're thinking. You don't have to draw everything, even if it's just a stick figure, you know, you know, just say, you know, here's like a Kona with, a, you know, an Indian print design in here. And, uh, you know, write it out. Just do a quick little sketch, a stick figure, just to get your ideas in your um, in your uh, repertoire. OK, so I'm going to set this one aside. And in a minute, we're going to do a giveaway now. And then uh, and then we will uh, I'll talk a little bit about some of these books just for some idea and inspiration for a little bit. And uh, if you want, I can do a little bit of coloring in my copy of the Explorer's Journey, which again, my plan is, is to go through the book and just uh, paint in with black acrylic paint or a pen, um, you know, a brush pen and color in the areas that are going to have star portals in them. I've already done those. And every page is going to have some of these on there. And then I don't, I haven't decided on any colors or anything, but here's my copy. Now I'm going to give away two copies today. Now listen to the rules, guys. Listen to the rules, please. <laughs> Hi, Christine. This is how it works. Wait till I type in go. When I type in go, put in a number between one and 100. It doesn't matter if there's two or three or however many people, 100 here. Because it's going to be the first person closest without going over. The first person closest without going over. I'm bringing up random.org right now. So the first person closest without going over. You can see here, I have 1 to 100. I've not generated a number yet. So after everybody puts in a number... It's going to be the first two people closest because I'm giving away two. So the first two people closest to the number without going over. Now, listen to this rule here. This is for U.S. only. After I give away these two books, I'm going to do a giveaway for international. I'll do one giveaway for an international for a print because I can mail that easily and not spend $25 for a book <laughs> to mail, right? So, yeah. One number only, okay? Wait till I type in go, and I will count down, and after I put in the words, after I put in stops, no numbers count after that. So don't dilly-dally. Don't dilly-dally, okay? One number only between 1 and 100. There we go. Okay, one number only. And the first two people, the first two people closest... <clears throat> we'll get a copy of the explorer's journey okay so i'm going to give away two copies and uh <clears throat> and then again i'll do an international giveaway of a print after we're done here just because of the shipping issues the cost of shipping some places you know like you know the, to canada has taken uh, over three weeks just to get a, you know, a, a sending Deb and Rex her drawing. It's three weeks, uh, going on three weeks. I, don't, I know she'll eventually get it, but it's just, there's so much different um, international issues right now with mail that uh, I will send you, I'm just going to mail out an envelope with a print in it, international. <laughs> so, all right. So get your numbers in. I'm going to count down now. 10, 9, 8, 7. Six, five, four, three, two. Get your lot number in and one. Okay, no more numbers. Okay, so let's get my <clears throat> generator here. So let's see. The first two people closest to 23 without going over the first two people closest to 23 without going over okay 23 is the number 
the first two people. And I let my mods and I let everybody look through. Yeah, I know there's a lot of issues with mail just in the U.S. I know, Gail, for sure. All right. So I am going to wait for my mods to um, tell me the first two people. It's the same exact thing, so it doesn't matter which one y'all tell me first. But the first two people closes without going over. <clears throat> okay. And if everybody is over 23, I'll pick another number. Or if there's only one person that's under 23, I'll pick another number. Okay. So it's the first two people under 23. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So I'll wait for two or three people. Um, I gotta wait for my chat to catch up. Let me do. I'm gonna put a test in my chat just for my cat chat my chat to catch up. Okay. All right. Let's see. I'm waiting on my mods. I see uh, a couple people saying who they think got it. So closest to 23 without going over. Do I need to scroll back myself? Let me look. I usually let my mods. Okay, I see someone had 18. So there's people that are under 23. Okay. All right, Janet said Kimberly557 had 20. Well, I saw someone had 23. I thought I saw someone had 23, Janet. Jeanette got 23. So Kimberly and Jeanette. Okay, so I'm going to write this down tentatively. 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 Jeanette had 23. And Kimberly 557 had 21. Okay, am, am I right? Are we are we good? Kimberly and Jeanette. Jeanette. Okay. It looks like Kimberly and Jeanette. You're welcome. Y'all both, I know I think I've Kimberly's address, but if y'all don't mind emailing me your address again, um, just to make it easier on me to find you. <laughs> okay. So Kimberly and Jeanette. Okay, so let me write Jeanette. Kimberly557, email me your addresses, and I will get these out. Today's Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, depending on if Janet and I do a stream tomorrow. Or, you know, it'll, either, it'll be this week. It'll be either Thursday or Friday. I'll get these in the mail to you guys. So, uh, And thank you. Fa Our Faithful Mass is the one that gave these to us. Okay. Our Faithful Mass. So if you see Our Faithful Mass, well, she's I call her Our Faithful Mass. She's Faithful Mass. If you see her around at other streams or if you visit her channel, and if you're a winner or if you just want to say thank you for giving us books to give away, uh, make sure and thank her as well. And, uh, okay, thanks, Kimberly. So Kimberly and Jeanette, email me. And, if again, if you see Faithful Mass around the um, Internet, Tell her thank you that you won one of her books. All right. So now, um, yeah, okay. These are the two unused ones. So now I'm going to do a giveaway for international. And you can have your choice of either having a um, one of my uh, peace sloth prints or within the next, I don't know, within a week, maybe a week and a half. I'm going to make prints out of, and I'm not done yet, but when I finish my Samurai Owl, I'm going to make a print of this. So if you win, if you win uh, one, one international winner, I'm going to do, it's all the same thing. Wait till I type in go. When I type in go, put in a number between one and 100 international. This is international only. And uh, you can either pick a pea sloth or you can pick the um, samurai owl. The samurai owl is going to be in black and white. Okay. And this one is, in, of course, in color. So you can pick which one you want. All right. So when I type in go, one number only again, one number only. This is for international. Okay. All right. There you go. 
You're welcome, Jeanette. Don't forget to email me your address now because I want to get these out. Okay, so everybody in international put in your number, and we're going to generate a new number in a minute. The 23 was from the 23 was from the uh, U.S. color book giveaway. Now I'll generate a new number as soon as everybody puts in their number. So thanks, everybody, for being here. Thanks for participating. I like doing some giveaways and thanking everybody and, um, you know, just being a part of the channel. Thanks to the lurkers. I hope some of the lurkers logged in long enough to do, <laughs> to do a giveaway with us. I try to uh, say ahead of time in the you know beginning of the show that we're going to do a giveaway and give everybody some time to be here. All right. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. One. Okay, let's see who the international win winner is. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Okay, here we go. Generate. 14. The person closest to 14 without going over. Either 14 on the nose or 14 without going over. Okay, 14 was the number. So we'll give the mods and everybody a minute to do that. And um, yeah. Hi, Marita. Anybody else coming in? Thanks. Um, oh, you're welcome. You're welcome, Terry, Terry Yo. Yo, Terry. I can't, I can't not say that. <laughs> Yo, Terry. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, international for you should not have been in the first draw. Okay, well then, Jeanette, since you were, um, then I will do, I will give you a choice of a print. Jeanette won in the first one, and she's international. I don't send international books, so we'll, we'll, fi we'll fix this. Let's do this one first. We'll fix it. Hang on, Jeanette. Thank, thank you for letting me know. Okay, all right, we're going we're gonna to fix this. Just a minute. Let's see who wins this first. Okay, so who had, Miss Gigi had 13? Okay, Miss Gigi, is it Miss Gigi? Miss Gigi, do you want, do you want a pea sloth? Or do you want the samurai owl when it's finished in a week or so? Okay. All right, hang on, we're going to fix it. Don't everybody, don't get your panties in a wad, it's fine. I'm going to let Gigi pick one of the prints as well. Gigi, you be thinking if you want to, do you want a pea sloth, Gigi? Or do you want the samurai owl when he's finished? Now, he's not going to be this big. He's going to be, he's going to be an 8 by 10. But uh, you can pick which one you want. Do you want the black and white? Gigi, you as well. I mean, uh, Gigi and uh, Jeanette. Okay, so Miss Gigi... Miss Gigi, email me your address. She wants the owl, okay? Miss Gigi is going to have an owl. Now, Jeanette, Jeanette Chabonou, Jeanette, do you, what do you want? Do you want the, um, do you want a pea sloth or do you want an owl? We're going to work it out. Just hang loose, people. Which one do you want? Do you want a pea sloth or an owl, Jeanette? We're taking you off the color book and we're moving you over to the prints. <laughs> Hang on. Okay, so do you want um, Jeanette? Do you want do you want the owl or do you want the pea sloth? She wants an owl too. Okay, so that's two owls for our two international winners today. That's fine. It's fine. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do one more giveaway since we only gave away one of the books. Because Jeanette's went with the print because she's international. So now, again, U.S. only. We're going to give away the second one of these because Jeanette went over to the prints. So Kimberly55711. Five, five, and um, <clears throat> oh, i got a stack over here. And then um, uh, Towel, to 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 um, they are for supporters of the channel. Okay, so here we go. We're going to do this one more time. This is for USA only. 
we did, we gave away two on the international. Now we're going to do the second USA because Jeanette went over to the international. One to 100. Wait till I type in go. Okay. Wait till I type in go. One number only. I'm going to bring up a, a random.org again. So now the last number that won was 14. We'll put in a new number in a minute. Okay. USA only. Okay, there we go. All right, USA, USA. <laughs> okay, so that way we're giving away two of these books. Let's make sure that's not the one I'm working in. I think that's over here. Yeah, okay. All right, the first person closest to whatever uh, random.org generates the first person closest without going over either on the nose or closest without going over is we're going to do the explorer's journey okay it all worked out people it all worked out okay del lobo go meditate <laughs> you're welcome thanks for being here Thank you so much. Thanks for supporting the channel. Don't forget, y'all, if you uh, super chat or PayPal me, send me your address. Uh, if you PayPal tip jar me, you can leave in the comments. You can leave in the comments your address, okay, in PayPal. So uh, do that. It's a, you know, PayPal, it's a, you know, nobody can see it but me. Uh, so if you want to, um, if I don't have your address already, a lot of the uh, support channel supporters, I have their uh, address because they support me every month. So thank you so much, guys, for all you that support the channel every um, every month. All right. So I'm going to count down 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, two, one. Okay, so let's see. Let's do a new number. 14 was for the last one. Here we go. We'll generate a new number. 90. The person closest to 90 without going over. 90 is the number. Okay. Closest to 90 without going over. What, what was blue? I missed something Blue Petal said. What did Blue Petal say? I, I'm sorry, Gail, so much for what? I missed something. Blue Petal, Gail, y'all, whatever y'all are talking about, I missed it. So, okay, the person closest. Hi, Ray. Pamela Kane. Okay, Pamela Kane. What, is she, what was her number, Janet? Had 90 on the nose? Okay. Pamela, Pamela Kane's usually one of our lurkers too. So congratulations, Pamela. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you, Pamela Kane. Uh, send me your address. You got to send me your address, guys. I'm not going to go hunt you up. You have to email me your address. <laughs> if you don't email me your address, the stuff goes back in the giveaway pile within like a week or, two, you know, you're here. So you know to email me. It's not like I'm doing a comment giveaway. <laughs> yeah, Pamela. Okay, email me. Here's my email again. Um, there, there you go, Pamela. Email me. Thank you, Jane, for the super chat. And Jane, again, if you would like to um, get a, a print, send me send me your email jane thank you so much let me click on your super chat there thank you dd next time <laughs> next time for me uh thanks thanks jane email me and i will send you out a print for uh, supporting the channel okay i may, i i write it all down on post-it notes here so <laughs> but i do have to have your address before i can send out thank yous okay so congratulations pamela uh, yes, I am the ultimate, <laughs> the ultimate rule maker. Yeah, but Janet, you're the ultimate ruler maker. <laughs> okay, so Pamela Kane, <laughs> Kimberly 557, and then um, Jeanette in the International. 
<laughs> okay, so um, real quick before I show, you know, we'll we'll work a little bit in here. I don't have any colors picked or anything. And like I said, in my copy, I'm going to do a, like a star portal in every page of some form or other. So even if it's just a little bit of star, there's going to be star in every page at some some somewhere on the page. Okay. So I'm going to do that here in a minute. I'll work on a couple of pieces of that for a little bit. But before we do that, just because we've been talking about sketch sketchbooks and idea books and um, drawing practice, again, if you missed it a minute ago, what did I do? Um, I, I'd recommend this anatomy for fantasy artists. You know, even if you're not going to do a paint a fantasy painting, just the practice, just the practice of uh, drawing. Uh, from poses and again you can find moving poses on YouTube but um, this is an excellent book there's uh, lots of others out there like it but this one uh, focuses on fantasy and creatures and things so it's an awesome book to practice from so there's that and then again I'm going to show some of these these books right here and Janet I think ended up buying three of them uh, Miss Melody sent me them uh, all five of them for my birthday uh, two or three years ago. It might be three years now, but she sent them to me and uh, they are on 3D Total Publishing. I think last I checked, they were $25 or $30 each. So they're not cheap, but they are packed full. Now, I'm just going to be honest. If, if, you, if these are $25 or $30 well spent, if you buy these, any of these books. And I'm going to kind of show them to you. Um, there's the Sketching from Imagination Fantasy. There's Sketching from the Imagination and Insight into Creative Drawing. This is the first one in the series. And if you don't, you know, know what, like, topic to pick, I would recommend going with this one. Sketching from the Imagination Characters. And they're all big. I mean, they're hefty books. There's a lot in them sci-fi and dark arts or horror so um and i will try to not show any naked ladies so but don't get offended this channel is not for kids this channel is not for kids i do try to keep it fr family friendly as an art channel so that kids you know they're watching but at the same time it's not made for kids so you know if i if you see a boobage don't email me <laughs> Thank you, Pacola. Pacola, just let me get that. Uh, uh, there we go. So, yeah, they're all on Amazon. And uh, if you find one, you can find them all, right? If you find one, you can find them all. Thank you, Pacola. And the links, uh, the chat, guys, has been taking a day, sometimes two days, to appear in the live record, uh, the recordings of our live show. So if the chat doesn't show up in a day, give it another because all the links are live links in the chat. But sometimes a chat, I don't know why the algorithm, the bots, the I don't know why. But anyway, the live chat doesn't appear immediately when the video appears. So if you've gone back and go, oh, I wanted to see the live chat. Well, if it's not there in the first day, it might be there the second day. So just saying, um, it might take uh, it might take a day or two, especially on the live longer live shows. Like mine are usually, you know, three between three and four hours. It can take a day or two for the chat to appear. Okay, just saying. Okay, so sketching from the imagination. One of the things about these books that is really cool is they have all these different artists and they're alphabetized. So. Um, at the beginning here, you can see all the different artists in alphabetical order. So if you're looking for a specific artist and you want to see if their work is in here or see their work, um, you can look in the in the table of contents. They are all alphabetized. All right. Uh, let me just read an introduction to one just so just because. Drawing and ideas are the foundations of great figurative art. In both digital and traditional art, sketching is, more often than not, the first stage of any artwork where intangible concepts, thoughts, and inspirations first become an image. 
This book explores how 50 artists use lines to create images from ideas. It, contain, it contains both fully formed drawings and design sketches of a hugely diverse spectrum of art, from children's illustration and comics to fantasy designs, surrealism. Well, it goes on. Okay, I'm skipping here. I want to kind of get to the point. Sketches are one of the most ephemeral forms of art, often discarded or often discarded or discarded and in the case of pencil or charcoal drawings are also subject to decay from the elements. We hope that this book will record and celebrate these works, bringing sketches together from portfolios, profiles and studio floors to celebrate them in this visually stunning collection. Rather than another how to draw a book, sketching from the imagination is a compendium of concepts to intrigue and inspire. And so, again, I think, if I'm not mistaken, there are 50 uh, artists in each of the books. Some of the books have this, oh, the same artist in more than one book, but different drawings. So if you see one of the artists in this one, they may have also been in another. Okay, so again, I'm going to try to just kind of flip through uh, and I'll kind of skip through and kind of flip in a, a few different ways. But each artist has, first it has their name at the beginning, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about eight pages, I think, for each artist. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, it looks like about eight. So anyway, um, and every artist is different. And, you know, this, this particular one is all just sketching in general. It's not, um, it's not a specific topic. So there's a little bit of everything in this one. Fantasy, creatures, um, sci-fi, probably some horror in here. Um, and, and just different. It's like, it's like taking a peek in their sketchbooks, right? It's like taking a peek in their sketchbooks. So if you like that type of thing, or if you like, like imagine FX magazines and things like that, you will love these books. Uh, you will, you know, if you ever just say, I don't know what to draw and I'm, I'm out of ideas, you know, flip through one of these books. And again, maybe make a little practice using some of their ideas and practice in your own sketchbook, but then expand it and write, you know, even if you just went through a book like this and just stopped on every page and wrote down everything that occurred to you when you look at it, like what occurs to you when you see this guy right here? You don't necessarily have to draw a man with an umbrella, but what what can you occur? What if what if he was like in his underwear going out to get the newspaper? Not that I've ever seen that, but it, what if, you know, I mean, you can make up and imagine different scenarios or different stories or different creatures. You know, if they show a dragon, what if that was instead of a dragon, it was, you know, like I did my owl or, you know, you can do so many different things. Um, and you can see how they've done it in pen and ink, how they've done pencil, digital. You can just see so many different ways and types of drawing. OK, so that one is the first one sketching from the imagination and insight to creative drawing. And then there's a book on the different topics. This one's on fantasy. And again, I'm, you know, I'm going to try to keep a nudity to a minimum, but there is, there is nudity in these, you know, you just got to kind of flip through. Um, if, if that bothers you, I'm trying to flip through, but this one has all kinds of fantasy artists and different sketchbooks, castles, creatures. And uh, so you can always, purchase a book like this on the topic that is more interesting to you so this one's fantasy okay then this one is just characters i'm not looking at chat very much bye cindy lee anybody else that's popping in or out thanks for stopping by okay characters and again it's like looking in these artist sketchbooks I hope I'm not going too fast, but to give you an idea. Uh, I mean, they're packed full, what, 300 pages or something like that uh, in, in the different ones. I think Jake Parker's in one of these as well. I just saw something that reminded me of him. So I think Jake Parker's in one of these. Jake Parker is the um, 
I was going to say instigator of Inktober, the inventor or the starter of Inktober. So that one is characters. This one is sci-fi. So you can have more spaceships and space robots and creatures that look more like space and vehicles and uh, transportation kind of things in space. And... Uh, But I mean, just let's just pick that one for an example. One of these. I mean, just look at that detail. There's another one here. This one. Look at these. Look at that. Right. I just want to give y'all a little bit of a. A little bit of a flip through so you can see the different styles and they're all you know they're all just different styles and different mediums a lot of pen and ink there's digital though and uh so that one is sci-fi and then the last one is dark arts which is the horror so they got a lot of uh weird creatures and monsters and aliens and you know that kind of thing I love these books. I, I go back to them all the time just to, you know, I mean, I could, I could pick one up, just open it to any random page, and I'm thinking, oh, okay, I got an idea now. It doesn't take long. And if you have a Society of Idea collector, if you uh, have a notebook where you collect your ideas, you know, if you don't draw this well, and, and not many people do draw, you know, extremely well like these artists. But that doesn't mean that you can't do your own work, your own practice, your own development and get better at as uh, as you as you can get. But it takes practice. It takes practice. Don't you know, don't think it doesn't. So anyway, I just wanted to, you know, show you those. Again, they're put out by 3D Total Publishing. You can get them on Amazon. They're big, thick books. They're all the same size. I think they're about 300 pages. Let's see. Um, yeah, 309. So they're, they're around 300 pages of art in each book. Okay. So let me check chat here. Take a sip of juice. Hope everybody's hanging out and chatting, making friends. Oh. All right, so back to a more uh, child-friendly <laughs> um, uh, book here. Again, this is not a channel for children. I don't want to give that impression. You know, there's all these rules on YouTube about um, gearing your videos toward children. And those rules aren't to say that you should, you can't have children, you know, that it's not, don't have, can't have anybody, you know, watching at all. What those rules are made for is if you gear your chat, your, your show toward children, if you are uh, for the, you know, the advertise, it's all goes back to the advertising essentially uh, that you're not, uh, you're not putting uh, toys or whatever. You're not gearing your channel toward attracting children to watching. Those have their own specific rules if you make kids videos. So we say, you know, as adult artists, we're not making these videos for kids. So, but I do try to keep my show family friendly. Okay. So again, I showed this earlier, The Explorer's Journey by David Haben. Haben or Haben, I'm not sure he pronounces it, who is also the creator of the Search for the Light Bulb Burglar. I tried to pull that real quick uh, off my shelf, but I'm not sure. Oh, I see it. I see it. Okay. So he also did this book, which was awesome as well. And it's a, a steampunk coloring book mystery. And this one, again, let's just flip through. This one has all the different um, story elements, but you have to, I don't want to say you have to write the story, but you kind of do. You have to imagine what is the story about. And um, again, I think these would be awesome for you to uh, share with kids in your lives 
uh, and make up your own stories. You could write the stories. You could write them on this side, uh, even though they are perforated. Well, this, I don't know if this one's, yeah, it's perforated too. You could write the story on this side. Let the kid tell the story and you write the story. Uh, you can start by writing it out in pencil if you want to erase it and write it in ink later and nicely or something. And then let them color it. Let them have their own book that they made up the story, right? If they in, if they wrote the story to this um, to these images, same thing for this one. If they wrote the story and then uh, they could color their, the story that they made up, okay? This one, again, I, I said earlier and showed earlier, you can go from front to back or back to front. And you have two separate characters that meet in the middle. So let me get to the middle. So you can, you can go from front to, front to the middle here, and this is where they meet up. Or you can read it from back to front, and they meet in the middle. So it's a little guy and a girl. So they meet here in the middle of the book. So you can read it, color it, invent it, write it, whichever way you want to do it. <laughs> and what I'm going to do is, and I'll go ahead and do with this page. I said earlier, if you weren't here, I'm going to have every page is going to have a, a black um, painted with stars, you know, like a star portal, something to do with the stars on every page. So whether it's just a small section or a larger section, I'm going to have that uh, some kind of a star dimension on every page. And, um, and then I'll go back and color. So let me just go ahead and do this one at the very end of the, I mean, in the middle of the book. So I'm going to just use, if it's very tiny, this is pretty big, although I could go around the little characters maybe i'll even make them have a little bit of a glow around them maybe i'll have a little glow around them here not much just to kind of so i don't have to actually paint right up to them but i want it pretty pretty small and then i'll paint i'll just use paint for the uh, painting it in the star, uh, the section with the stars. So let me get a brush here. Let's see. If y'all have any questions, put them in caps. And uh, so now I'm going to just paint, paint all this in, and then I'll um, either uh, splatter or put in. I, I've just been drawing them in. All right, this brush is a little, little flared. Let me get a better one. <clears throat> and then another one here. Here we go. I'll use this. I like flat angle brushes are my favorite brushes. Flat angle brushes, but I um I, I just got a pointy one here. Be making a star portal. <laughs> There's going to be a star portal on every single page. It's like it, in, in my world of, of inventing this storyline, there would be a, a way to get to a way to get home in every scenario. There's always a way to get home. So I would have a little bit of a star portal on every page. And again, I'll put color pencil, a white pencil around them to make them look a little glowy. But you gotta, you know, you gotta do it in stage. You gotta let it dry. And I'm just got my paint right here. I'm using it full strength so that it has good coverage. So I'll do a couple like this and maybe I'll look at some and see it, think of some colors because I haven't decided on any color theme or do I want like just colors, muted colors all the way through? Do I want bright colors all the way through? I haven't thought about any of that yet. I just got these in yesterday. 
I think it was yesterday. What day? Today's Wednesday. I think it was Wednesday. I think it was Tuesday. <clears throat> Hi, Mary. No, it's a it's one of the books that Faithful Mess sent us. She sent us a stack of these color books. And I've shown it a couple of times, so you can go back and, and look at it. Go back and look at it later. The flip through and my plan for them. Okay, so again, it's not going to be a lot of star store portals just little sections just that so you can see that there's some on every page thanks Bacola putting in links So anyway, Janet and I were talking about possibly doing, and, and I'm not putting any pressure on my mods. I don't ever want them to feel like, you know, uh, they ever, ever have to be here. Because, um, you know, if I have me and Janet and another guest, I think, you know, we can, we're able to uh, kind of watch the chat between two or three people. But, uh, of course, if they want to be here, that's awesome. Or if my mods ever feel overwhelmed and think we need more mods, Pacola will be the first one to tell me, I'm sure. Julie would too, but Julie's just go, I'll just kick them. <laughs> I don't know if Julie's still here. I can, and just Julie would just go, I don't, I don't put up with no crap, you know. So um, anyway, uh, <laughs> but we were talking about doing a Thursday morning show before Kathy Arbor comes on at 1 Eastern. And uh, in the morning for, you know, maybe just a couple hours doing a show with guests. And there's Kathy Arbor. Kathy Arbor does a show every Thursday at 1 Eastern on her, um, on her channel. And uh, she does all kinds of projects and teaching. And, and so, yeah, if you, if you want to see some more awesome art, go watch Kathy Arbor at 1 p.m. Thursday Eastern time. So anyway, Janet and I were thinking about, you know, still about 8, 39 in the morning still. And, uh, oh, it does kind of look like a dress, doesn't it? Well, wait, wait, wait for it. Wait for it. <laughs> and um, <laughs> Julie goes, are you saying I'm opinionated? <laughs> uh, so anyway, yeah, Julie, uh, yeah, we have awesome mods here. They don't put up with a bunch of stuff. If you're a troll or just coming, yeah, you are you won't be here long. That's just what I'm saying. So anyway, um, uh, we're thinking about doing a show, you know, with, to have a guest on. And it could be a different guest every week. So Janet and I would uh, do a Thursday morning show and have a different guest or maybe two. I don't want to get it more than two guests at a time if we're if we're arty. If it's just a, you know, if I just have a random guest show on uh, some night sometime like with Zippy the Unicorn, then it's you can have a little bit more chaos, but <laughs> um uh, but, you know, if we're going to do some art and talking, you know, talk with a guest, it's better to have like just, you know, me, Janet and a guest so that we can kind of talk with them. I don't want to say interview them, but, you know, grill them, <laughs> ask them polite questions and um, and just get to know some of the fibs. So it would be a different, um, you know, it could be different fibs every week. Or whatever Janet and I feel <clears throat> feel like doing it, and uh, I would post it on Twitter and uh, to let y'all know, or you know, word of mouth or something. Yeah, there you go, Julie. Be kind or be gone. But anyway, I thought that we would. Um, I don't know if y'all would like that. Hi, Patricia. Uh, I've already had um, uh, a couple people say that they would like to be on. And, uh, and I want to see maybe Lena, uh, and, um, uh, oh, I, anyway, I have two or three people on, on a list 
and see if they would like to uh, just come on for a couple hours on a Thursday morning. Has to be morning because I'm not going to go like over Kathy Arbor and stuff like that. And usually Mary Altier is done by like 8.30, 9 o'clock because she comes on before me. So uh, so would y'all like to do that? I mean, you know, um, you have to kind of let us know to support the channel because I don't want to do it if nobody really wants to do it. I only want to do it, you know, if y'all want to. All right, heat gun. <laughs> Okay, so now let me get my, I want to get my white Posca and I want to get my color pencil here and just put a little bit of a, glow. You like the idea, CB? Hi, Lady Jen. So now the only thing is, is to be on the show, you have to, you know, have a camera to be on the show. So, you know, you don't have to show your face. You don't have to do a, a you know, you don't have to show your face. Just show your hands and your art, whatever you're working on. Uh, I think Painty Girl, who else did I? There was a few people that said that they would do it. So. CB's an awesome, awesome artist. She just doesn't, I don't think she does videos. I'm just looking at the chat right now. So, I don't know, Lady Jan, would you do a, would you come on the channel on a guest, uh, as a guest? Um, and I'm pretty sure you can do it from your phone. Uh, I'm not sure, you know, StreamYard, I just send you a link. All I do is send you a link, and you click on the link, and you should be there. I don't know uh, how. It's very, very simple. That's why I got StreamYard. I got StreamYard so that I could do um, guests. So. <clears throat> I never know what day it is, but when I see you live, I pop in. I always stream a Monday and Wednesday. That is my regular stream time. So uh, 9 a.m. Eastern, I usually come on about 8.30 to make sure everything's set up and do some chatting. But um, my regular every week stream is Monday and Wednesday, 9 a.m. Eastern. I've been doing it for 10 years. I used to do three days a week and I cut it back to two and uh, Janet asked me the other day or last week, she goes, have you ever missed a show? And I think there was two weeks in 10 years where I've been on a vacation that I did not stream. So I don't, other than those two vacation weeks, I don't think I've ever missed a full, well, or even a day. So in 10, in 10 years. So I do stream, you know, thank, thank the good Lord. You know, like I say, the good Lord willing in the creek don't rise. That we're here twice a week. But I think it would be fun to have a random guest on a Thursday. On a Thursday. We, um, you, don't have, you don't have to draw. You could do art journaling or whatever. A painty girl is going to probably do her painted light bulb creatures or characters. So you don't have to draw. It's, you know, I, we do a little of everything. If you're doing, if you're working on a color book. Yes. APG Jamie would be a good guess. Yes. She's a crazy lady. <laughs> CB. Um, so uh, yeah, it's whatever you do creative. You know, if you're doing, a, if you're a color book colorer, that's fine. It, the idea is just to have different uh, creatives, have different creatives on it. Like I would like to have Nasser on. He's a writer. You know, Nasser does, you know, I've promoted his books before, which you can get on, um, you can get on uh, Amazon. And he does horror writing. Now, he's not going to come on here and tell you a ghost. I mean, well, maybe he would tell us a ghost story. I don't know. But anyway, uh, I would just like to have creatives on talking about their process, what they do, how they do it. It does, you know, if you want to be working on a project or just have some of your projects at hand. 
uh, show a couple of your art journals or just show some of your work if you don't want to actually do the work on it. It could just be something like from an hour to two hours. I'm not talking about like a full on, you know, marathon here. <laughs> I'm just talking about um, Lady Jan said yes. Okay, so if you are here in the chat, here's my email again, and you would be willing to just come on, talk about your creative process. Um, or if you're if you're not here and you're watching this, you know, message me or get in touch with me. Leave me an Instagram comment or however you follow me, uh, and let me know that you would like to be on the show. And just talk about your process, talk about your work, and just show some of your stuff. We'll promote your channel. We'll promote your IG. And so anyway, just kind of have a promotional get to know different artist once a week like on a thursday now of course you know and i'm not gonna put janet on the spot either and say janet you gotta be here every thursday i can be here every thursday if janet can be here that's fine if she can't then we'll do who with whoever wants to come on yeah carla oh that would be good yeah maybe we could get um nasser to come on at, during halloween and tell a ghost story that's a good idea i'm gonna write that down <laughs> Let's see, Nasser on show in October for a ghost story. Yeah, I'll ask him. That would be fun, wouldn't it? Y'all, would y'all be up for that? <laughs> so if um, yeah, get in touch with me. Let me know if it would be um, if it would be fun for you guys to have to get to know some of our other artists. Even though like APG Jamie, she has her own channel and she streams and does her own video. Same for, you know, a lot of us. But it would just be kind of fun to have a little get to know, grilling, I mean, ask polite questions, <laughs> video chat where the person can show their work. And Janet and I could ask them, well, how do you do that? You know, it would be more about them than, uh, than us. You know, we might be working on something at the same time, but I really want to, you know, maybe I'll have my sketchbook idea out, write down ideas when people are guests. I, if they give me an idea, I'll write it down, you know, that kind of thing. We'll just see, you know, if y'all would be up for it. So, all right. So I think, let me hit this with the heat gun. And maybe there's just a little bit of a, maybe there's a little bit of a shooting star of, of, over each of them. Something like that with a little star, a little glow around the shooting star, something like that. So anyway, I want to do a section like this on every single page. Now, I'm not going to make y'all watch me do the whole thing. <laughs> But maybe another, I'm just looking at it, and I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm winging it. I'm just doing it as I think of it. So I think I want another section here. This brush is too floppy. I need a, I need a better brush. Let me get one of my brush, my brush jars. And I put this guy, I put this guy on a stick. I can't love this guy. <laughs> I love this guy. Hi, Linda. So Tracy says, um, uh, yeah, Lena. Yeah, yeah. We, um, I told, well, Janet and I were talking about asking Lena, so we'll get Lena um, if, she, if she'll do it. You know, I mean, I don't want to put pressure on anybody. I want people to feel comfortable. You know, I want people to feel comfortable. You know, I'm just looking through my, I really want a nice little flat angle brush. That one's too floppy. <clears throat> but it has to be pretty small to get in some of these tight spaces. Oh, well, here's a pointy one. These acrylic ones are pretty springy. I like those are pretty springy. So we'll go with, we'll go with this one. Um. <coughs> So if you're if you're uh, up for being a guest, we'll have to think of a name for it too. We'll have to think of a name for uh, the guest show. I don't want to I don't want to have it Fibs Friends in the Box. I don't want to have that in the name 
because, you know, some of like Nasser, he's our friend, but he's not really our group. You know what I mean? So I don't want to make it sound like we're containing it to a certain group. I want to have, you know, all different creatives on, whether they're part of the fibs or not. So we're going to have to come up with the name for the day, the guest day. Day-o guest, guest day. You know, Dee Dee talks. <laughs> now, it's going to be me and hopefully me and Janet. And, and it's kind of like interviews. Fibs out of the box. <laughs> That's pretty good. That would be fobs. So and so we'd have fibs and fobs. <laughs> I kind of like that. Fibs and fobs because friends in the box and then F, F uh, well, it has two O's, but it would still be fob. You know, we could do friends out of the box. <laughs> I like that. That one was good. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Oh, that's good, Don. Let's make let's let it, friends out. Uh, I'm writing this down. <clears throat> All right, I'm writing down that Don's the one that came up with that. Okay, yeah, fobs. <laughs> Hey, Carla. So I don't know. But, you know, we also don't want it to be so obscure when people go fibs and fobs. Fibs and fobs, you know, I'd have to make um, like a clarification. Fibs and fobs in parentheses, you know, interviewing. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I'll think about it. But I do like that. <laughs> fibs and fobs. Oh my gosh. I, got, I did write that down, Don. Okay. And I got Nasser, a thing to ask Nasser. Okay. So let's try this. <laughs> okay. So let's see. I know I'm missing some chat, but I want to be doing something here, not just chatting, because then people will email me. Too much chatting, which I try to clarify at the beginning of most shows. This is a chat show. We do chat. We do rabbit trails. We talk about multiple different things, and we go all over the place. So don't email me. All right, something like that. <laughs> Hi, Tatiana. Uh, bye, Gail. Hi, Judy. Anybody else coming in or going? <laughs> Maybe I'll have a little star shine up in this one. I want it right in the center, but maybe right here. Let's have a little star glow up there. You can do a little. It might even be fun to put a little... That'd be a lot more work, though. I was going to say put a little watch hands or parts on every page, but I don't know if I want to get into collage. Collaging in the book. Artistic rabbit trails with Dee Dee. I like that. I like that, Juanita. I'm writing that down because, you know, we do rabbit trails. Artistic rabbit trails with Dee Dee. And I'm putting Juanita down for that one. I like to give credit. Uh, oh, oh, Hubster just, oh, that's, well, I should tell him, bring me home some. He just messaged me. I'm good for lunch. Um, they just, they just catered in Chick-fil-A. So I don't need any lunch. I'm like, well, bring me home some. I got to go get my own Chick-fil-A. Anyway, Artistic Rabbit Trails with Dee Dee. Juanita said that. Okay, I like that one too, Juanita. I like that one. Okay, so <laughs> I'm trying to keep an eye on chat. Also, uh, but y'all email me good stuff. Don't don't email me and say you're chatty. I know I'm chatty. That's what we do. We chat. <laughs> okay, so there we go. So I kind of like that. So that is the middle of the book. So this little character, you know, comes comes through all this. 
right? Goes through all this of uh, worlds to get to here. And then this little girl here, she starts out on a submarine. And I've already started adding some of the star things here. And then she goes all the way through and comes up to her little road, less traveled, and meets them up here. So that's the middle of the book. So it's just a clever thing for the, um, the author artist to combine, you know, two stories like that in one. Kind of reminds me, what are those um, YA books um, that you could read different endings into them? I don't know. It was when my kids were younger. I don't know if they still make those where they have different endings. There's a name for it or a series or something like that. What was that series called? Not a series of unfortunate events. What was that called? Does anybody know? Oh my gosh. Linda says, good news. I found my Yuru notes from back in the depths of a drawer. I still have not found that notebook. Uh, Linda McAllister, for those of y'all that don't know, Linda McAllister and I were back in the game Yuru it's a, a spinoff of Mist, and it was like one of the first online games back in 2002, two, three, four, back in there. And um, and I drew all the avatar. I mean, not for the game. I didn't draw the avatars for the game. I was like the fan art um, avatar drawer. <laughs> and I have a whole uh, notebook full of drawings of the book stands and all kinds of the mechanics and machinery of a whole three ring binder of stuff that I did for Yuru. And I cannot find that sucker. It must be, I don't know where it, it, there's, there's a secret secret lair in here somewhere. I can, I mean, I've got hundreds of books and journals and I cannot find that one, but I'm going to, I'm still on the hunt, Linda. I'm still on the hunt. Janice, it doesn't have to torture you. I know. We love our Chick-fil-A. Choose your own adventure. Is that what they were called? Okay. So some, some of the people in chat are saying it's choose your own adventure. I probably still have some of them around here. But uh, a lot of those books I put it there uh, in the garage because I don't have any more bookshelves. I don't have room. But uh, I still have some of them around here, I'm sure. Yeah, it is, isn't it, uh, Carla? And hi, by the way. So, yeah, uh, Linda, can you, do you want to post some pictures on Instagram or somewhere? I'd love to see some of your uh, notes. I've, I mean, I have like leather, I, have, I made my own um, Rialta book. I mean, I, yeah, well, anyway, we we'll won't get into that because no, most of y'all weren't there. <laughs> you had to be there. Oh, let's see. Um Yeah, but I would like to see that. Okay, so now let me do one more page. Uh, I'll just, you know, since I started with the girl over here. And I'm not going to necessarily do them in any order. Uh, I just know that I want uh, I want uh, some star shine, some star gates on every page. And some of them, like I think I, in here I want to do it in each one of those little, like that could be little caves on each one of those. But that will take a while. I don't know if y'all want to sit here and watch me do that. That's small. Uh, I don't remember. See, I thought it was in like a, I thought it was in this black scrapbook. I mean, brown leather scrapbook uh, looking because that was kind of the, it was a whole thing, theme was books. You traveled through books. You traveled in the game in Yuru. And I have put, let me see. If you just all right, go on YouTube, you don't have to do it now, but if you go on YouTube and put in Yuru walkthrough, you are you, you are you put it in walkthrough in um, uh, YouTube, you'll find some game clips and stuff and actually full on walkthroughs, but you'll find game clips so you can see you created your own avatar. Of course, now there's tons of games like that where you create your own character and you are in the game. You are you in the game. But back then, 2000, what was it? Two, three, and four. I think what ended in 2004, Linda. Um, that was innovative to have, you know, worldwide servers to go onto a, a game like that. And um, so anyway, you, um, okay, bye, bye, Don. 
you and you create your you have your own clothes, your own hair, your face. You created your character thin, fat, tall, short. Well, within limits, you can be you know a giant, and you can be a you know a little tiny person. But uh, and you had your own claw, you had your own closet, and you could earn clothes, <laughs> and uh, you had your own clothes. But it was all puzzle solving. It was all puzzle solving. There's no shooting, no battles, no war. It was all puzzle solving, and you would puzzle solve with your friends you'd get together and you'd have a chat you'd have just like you have a chat here you'd have a chat room going with your friends everybody had a little watch like a, it was like an apple watch back you know you'd have your own little uh ki watch some called it a key some called it ki but anyway you'd have your own uh watch where you could your character could tap on it and you'd bring up your chat and then you could chat and you could click your watch and it would all go away and you would solve puzzles and go through the caverns. It was a whole world. There were books written on it. It was a based off of the uh, series Mist and Riven. It was a big deal. There were languages. There were societies and guilds. Well, they're called guilds. There were guilds for languages. And uh, there were, I mean, you just can't even imagine how big this was. Right? Right, Linda? <laughs> Yeah, I think it ended in, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it ended on my birthday in 2004. It could have been 2003, but it ended, yeah. Yeah, it's a spinoff of Mist, Carla. It was Mist characters. It was the Mist storyline, but it was a game called Yuru, and it was, it was made by Cyan. It was made by the same people. It was a great game. I played it. I mean, I'm not even going to tell you how much I played it. But I drew all the all my friends' avatars, at least a hundred of them. I drew all the um, I drew all the book stands and oh oh. So back to how you got around. So there were all these different worlds. There were all these different worlds. I don't know eight of them. And then after the after the uh, game shut down, worldwide live servers. Uh, people made their own servers, and they were still get togethers. And then there were some expansions here and there. But I think there was like eight, uh, if I remember, eight, nine different worlds. And how you would travel is in different parts of the world, and you'd have to solve puzzles to get all this. You'd have to solve puzzles to get to things and you'd have to solve puzzles to travel through these different um, dimensions. But how you did it, there were books. Everything was done with books and there were book stands in the different worlds and you'd have to get to the book stands. But to get to them, to get to another world, you'd have to solve puzzles to get to them. And then when your avatar laid their hand on the book, you would travel and you could flip the pages in the book to go to different worlds, depending on how far you were in the game. And then you could travel to the different dimensions and you could still meet your friends in these different worlds. The different world, you could still meet with your friends. It was so fun. Bye, Claire. Oh, you posted some notes on IG? Oh, let me go look. So anyway, it was it was awesome. And you became really good friends with these people, just like we're friends here, friends in the box, and we're friends over art. Well, we were all friends over the game. And you could exchange notes and, and pick and you could take pictures. You could take screen caps in the game and keep them in your file. And you can share your pictures and figure out the clues and the codes and the and it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. Now, after we'd all solved the game and done it 10 times or 50 times um, and we all knew how to get through everything, then when you would get new people in the caverns, when you'd get new people, you could help them. You could go with them and help them solve puzzles and lead them through and introduce them to other people and things that you could do together. It was just, it was so, it was so fun, wasn't it, Linda? Okay, uh, let me, all right, let me go over here. I think are you Linda there, Linda McAllister? Um, what's your what's your is it Linda? Oh, okay, it is here. I found you. So here's oh look, see see some of the notes. Oh my gosh, yeah. So here's some of the mechanicals and some of the notes that Linda took. She posted a couple pictures. So these are all the and you had to solve these puzzles. You had to get through. There was no it was no fighting, no swords, no guns. It was all puzzle solving. That's that's awesome. <laughs> uh, 
And there's all these mechanics and mechanicals and gears. And some worlds had lots of trees and flowers. Some worlds had um, complete uh, mechanicals. Just if y'all really want to know, just I'm serious, go on YouTube later and look up you are you, the letters, you are you, and look for um, uh, walkthroughs or, you know, clips, Yuru clips. It was a very unique game, especially for the times. I mean, I don't think WoW or none of those were out at the time. I'm talking, like I said, 2000 two, three, four, back in there. I can't remember exact dates on it, but it was back then in the early 2000s. So it's going on 20 years. And um, yes, Linda, you are you. Yeah, or you, Ru. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, steampunk looked like, war yeah. But anyway, if you would, uh, if you want to, yeah. Uh, Gar Garrison, as I said, Garrison, Garrison, Garrison. It's been so long, I don't even remember all the correct pronunciations. That was the spinning world of mechanicals, and you had to do all these jumps. And we did it all with the mouse and a computer keyboard. I had no controllers. I don't know. I think maybe later did they do it with controllers? We did it all with keyboards, keyboards and a mouse, and you do your jumps. And everything with keyboard and mouse. <laughs> and there was no, we didn't have the PlayStation controllers, although I think some of the games came out later with uh, PlayStation control, you know, stuff. I did it all on computer with play with a keyboard and a mouse. Balcony jump for the win, Linda. Yes. And there were all kinds of Easter eggs. And oh, it was just so fun. I'm just getting all giddy now. I get all giddy when I talk about the game. Oh, uh, yes. And you could jump in the rivers and swim and waterfalls. And it was just so, it was immersive. Of course, nowadays, I don't play the modern games, you know, where there are all these fantasy you know, uh, games and stuff, but a lot of it's, they're little tiny creatures, they're little tiny people. Now, you know, you'd have your cutaways like fan fantasy five and, you know, you'll have your cutaways where you have nice big screen shots of, you know, interactions and things of beautiful scenery. The whole game was that in you route, there was no little tiny people that you were manipulating around running around with little tiny people with swords and fight. None of that. You were fully immersed 24. You were running. You could run, you could jump, you could dance. You could, you know, but it was all fully that. So if you go look up Yuru, you'll see what I'm talking about. Try to go to look up Yuru opening sequence, opening sequence where you're dropped in a desert and you have to go find the cavern. You can do it. You can, the whole game is on walkthroughs. If you want to watch the whole game, it's probably, I don't know, how many hours would you think, Alinda? How many hours do you think the game would take uh, in a walkthrough? Because I can't remember. And a complete walkthrough through the whole thing, maybe minus the expansion packs. How long do you think it, how many hours? But there are people that have the, have the whole walkthrough up on YouTube. YouTube. Now it makes me want to go watch them again. Yeah. Long. Yeah. <laughs> Long, Linda said. But anyway, it is really, um, it was really fun. So, okay. Let me do, let me do one more. Let me do one more um, thing here. I think I'll do this one here while my brush is sitting here drying out. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do this one. And again, there's the little girl sitting on top of this bird. So I'll put a little glow around her because I'm going to do, um, I got to clean this brush out. It's all crusty now. But we, you, we, you lived in that caverns. A few weeks to do the whole game. Yeah, probably. But I'm talking about the, the guys and girls, well, probably some girls too, that made the walkthroughs, the video walkthroughs. Was if now, if you didn't play the game, you could go watch the walkthroughs. I've watched the, I've watched them. It's been some years, but I went back and watched the whole walkthrough. There was two or three of the guys in the cavern that made walkthroughs. 
I've watched them all. I'd watch one or two a, a night because it was so <laughs> it's entertaining just to watch the characters uh, go through the game. Now it makes me want to do it again. Do I want to go watch all the walkthroughs again? I would probably do it, Linda. Wouldn't you do it, Linda? Wouldn't you go watch the? Wouldn't you go watch all the walkthroughs again? I would. <laughs> it was so fun. I get the shivers when I hear the intro music. I know. I don't know if I could. Uh, maybe I could do a, a, like a five seconds. You know, you, you. I think you have fifteen seconds that you you don't get copyright. You can. Look. Hang on, guys. One moment. Rabbit trail. Rabbit trail. Oh, I'm going to see about you, Rue. You, Rue. You are you. Uh, intro walkthrough. Let's see. Let me see if I can find something. You would watch them? Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, here's 87 videos. Okay. This is probably the first one that pops up. Let's play Yuru Complete Chronicles. Diliandro, Diliandro 3000 has 87 videos. There are 87 videos that I walked through. 87 videos. I have watched them all. <laughs> I have actually watched them all. Let's bring one up. Yeah, hang on. <laughs> Part one, the desert. Okay, let's. Okay, let me uh, let me get past some of it just to. But yeah, go to Let's Play Euro Complete Chronicles, and his name is D I L A N D A U three thousand. Let me see. Oh, well, let's get past the, yeah. And the online portion. Okay. Uru is right, so, U-R-U, meaning that you play yourself. Here's where you that have your cause. That's mainly useful for the online portion of the game. But we also see the avatar during the offline portion, so let's All go right, on. so he's making his avatar. He starts from the very the beginning. Like any, uh, All right, so now let's get to the beginning when they... All right, now let me pass for some of this. Hang on. Oh, I wanted to hear him at land. Let's see if I can, if he does a sound where it lands. Okay, let's see. And so we begin Uru. Well, as you can see, the gameplay style of Uru is very different from the main myth games. It uses real-time 3D and a third-person perspective. You can see through the eyes. You can see your full body, or you can see through their eyes. They're first person. Say. We'll do occasionally to compensate for some bad camera angles in the game, or to get a better look at some things. I wanted to hear them drop down. I wanted them to drop down and hear the, you know, the opening, the sound, you know. But anyway, guys, and his is not the only one, but his is the most complete. And when did he make that those videos? Let me go look. When did he make those? He made these in 11 years ago. <laughs> he made the walkthrough 11 years ago. <laughs> anyway. Good times, Linda. Good times, right? All right. So now we're going to get back in the present world. <laughs> Back in, yeah, the, I can't do it. It's just a sound that I, I can't make that sound. And then you drop out of the sky and into the desert. And then you start having to, you have to walk miles. There's a lot of walking. Your legs are going to get tired in that game. <laughs> oh, sorry for that. Well, sorry, not sorry for the rabbit trail with Linda. Because it, it was, uh, 
and there were different guilds. I mean, I think the Europeans, didn't y'all have your own guilds overseas as well, Linda? Didn't you have some your own kind of special guilds that y'all did overseas? And Anyway, and they'd have meetups every year. I mean, in, in real life meetups. Um, they're out of C uh, Spokane, Washington, Cyan was or is. And uh, they'd have meetups and um, Mysterium meetups in, U in uh, UK. Yeah, they had a Dutch guild, a guild of greeters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, they'd have in real life meetups. It's a big deal. Mist and Yuru Riven, all of them. But again, Yuru was the uh, online game based off of Mist. I've shown y'all all my collection. I have all the walkthroughs. I have all the games. Uh, I have uh, all the all the CDs. I've you know played them all on computer. Um, all my books of of notes, but I can't find my binder of my avatar drawings. And I don't know why, because I know where everything else is. <clears throat> um, I never went to the meetups, Devin. I didn't go to them in person. I don't know if Linda did uh, overseas. Linda, did you ever go to a meetup? But yes, um, I actually made some um, uh, uh, reproductions of some of the items in the game, like the books and stuff. Uh, but... Uh, we all, uh, there was a big thing. See, part of the game was because it was still in production and it was constantly being made. It was constantly in making. So, and it, and we were in beta uh, in this game. And so they were constantly making new things. So parts of the game, when you were in the caverns and in these places where the game had not expanded yet, how they dealt with that were, were the orange cones. The orange cones you know traffic cones so if there were areas where where the game had not been developed yet there'd be orange cones and you sometimes you know as the game developed you'd find out like there'd be easter eggs and different things where you could jump the cones you could stand on the cones <laughs> you could do all this you could kick the cones uh, some of the guys figured out how to stack the cones. <laughs> there was all kinds of so when the game was in production and there was no new puzzles to do, we would do things like play with the cones. <laughs> we would play with the traffic cones in the caverns. I mean, it, it, some of the stuff just coming back to me. Oh my gosh, the cones. And, and then when I was I was really playing it a lot, Hubster, if he'd see an orange traffic cone in real life, he'd go, do you want me to stop and get you that cone? Of course, no. <laughs> cone gamers, yeah. <laughs> Linda, cone gamers. <laughs> I'm going to show this book one more time, guys. A, a quick flip through. So anyway, uh, it, it's just one of those games that, you know, if you weren't there, you know, it, it's not going to mean a lot to you. But if you were there, it's like you made so many good friends. You'd sit around. It's just like us here. You know, it's it's no different than this, except instead of arting together, we would be solving puzzles together and helping other people. New people would come in all the time and they would go, what, where do I start? Because you're chatting and chat. You have your chat room, right? And they'd go, well, where do I start? What do I do? Come with us. <laughs> and you could all travel together to the different worlds and help solve, help them solve puzzles and jumps. And, and oh, it was like it was really innovative for its time. Wasn't it, Linda? It was innovative for its time. Oh, yes. uh, okay, let me dry this. I'm going to put a little. <clears throat> put a little glow around her up here on the bird. 
but I'm going to have to make more of an effort to find that notebook, that notebook of um, sketches, drawings, doodles, all my stuff from the game, and um, the, uh, what do you call it, uh, avatars. Oh, I'll go think cone heads. All right, so let's see. <clears throat> but I hope y'all enjoyed the show. I hope y'all enjoyed the giveaway. We gave away a couple of these. I showed a uh, Hobby Lobby haul at the beginning. And uh, don't forget, if you want to be on a Thursday show with me and or Janet together uh, and come on and do a like an interview, talk about your art, your creativity, your writing, whatever it is you do creative and come on for an hour or two. It doesn't have to be a long show, you know, just a little bit of time on a Thursday morning. I'm going to well, I'm going to schedule it on Thursday morning, like 839 ish, somewhere around there. Same time as my regular streams, which are, I come on at 8.30 or so, but officially 9 a.m. Eastern, Monday and Wednesday. So if I do a Thursday morning show and Janet can be there whenever she wants, or if the mods want to be there, I appreciate that too. But nobody, you know, has to be there, you know. Um, but if anybody wants to, uh, oh, that's good. I like that, Lady Jen, A-R-T. Art, art, what she call it? Artistic rabbit trail. So Juanita called it artistic. What did she, oh, I got it written down over here? Art, yeah. Um, Juanita called it artistic rabbit trails, but it could be an acronym A R T. That would be good too. I want to figure this out. I don't want to get too complicated. <laughs> but yeah, art, um, art interviews, maybe. Uh, which stands for Artistic Rabbit Trails with Dee Dee. And, well, it's going to be Janet, too, but it'll be on my channel. Um, but I also like Friends Out of the Box. But art Artistic Rabbit Trails makes more sense. People would understand that better. They're not going to understand fibs and fobs. <laughs> I mean, we understand fibs and fobs. That could be the subtitle. Fibs and fobs could be the subtitle. So, again, guys, this book goes from front to back or front to middle and from back to middle. And then the two explorers meet in the middle. So I really like the idea of this book. And I'm going to have some of this on every page and then we'll figure out colors and stuff. But uh, so any questions or anything? Oh, that was from She Spins? Okay. Yeah, I didn't know if you made the ac made it an acronym. What what is going off? I have an alarm going off. What is why is my alarm going off? Hmm, I don't know. Did the cat walk? Well, it stopped. I have a smoke alarm. I have a, a carbon monoxide, but uh, I don't know. Stop. So can't be too dangerous. <laughs> but I'll check it out. All right, guys. Well, Hubster will be home even though he's not going to eat lunch because he ate lunch at work. Uh, I've got to go figure out something for myself. I dot. Um, yeah, we mentioned that earlier, dot. Um, okay, guys. Well, I'm going to head out again. Uh, I will see if Janet wants to do a show tomorrow if I can get with somebody. But again, kind of watch out for uh, a notification on a Thursday morning. I know y'all look for notifications on Monday and Wednesdays. Look for a notification on a Thursday morning. If there is or isn't one, then you'll know we're not doing an interview tomorrow. But maybe you can um, kind of pop in for that. All right, guys. Y'all have a great day. Thanks, mods. Y'all are awesome. We'll talk to you later. Bye, guys. <laughs>